What's up, dudes and dudettes? Welcome to the Cinema Scion Podcast. It is Sci-Fi September. As you know, I am Matthew, one of the superhero and sci-fi experts. I'm Dylan, the other superhero and sci-fi expert. I am Garrett, the drama and indie expert. And I am John Thompson. I am the action and animation expert. And thank you for joining us for another Sci-Fi September. Let's go. Let's yeah. fucking go. <laughs> yeah, we're continuing our series. Uh, this is going to be sci-fi movies of the 2000s top 10. Now it's like, these are, these are like, this in the 2010s is probably going to be the most fun. Yeah, agreed. I had 22 movies on the list I had to cut down to 10 this week. Mm-hmm. And next week I had like 19, so it's like crap. Yeah. There's stuff on both lists where, there's stuff that I really, really wanted to mention. It just did not make the cut. Right. So it's going to be a real pain. Yeah, tonight's going to be fun, but next week is the one I'm most excited for the most. Yeah, next 2010s is my favorite era for sci-fi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the 2020s. Well, the 2020s. The 2020s. Right? 2020s? The 2020s are shaped me up to be a really good de- uh, decade too. Yeah, They're true. Some so really true. high on sci-fi. Only, only yeah. halfway so far, but I could think of I think seven or eight really good sci-fi movie stuff came out this year right off the top of my head yeah. or this decade i just saw Same. one last night <laughs> oh yeah uh, I, um, I don't think it's for me no i would not like I, think it. I know what you're yeah talking i just about. saw last night i saw the substance um i loved it it's one of my favorite movies this year it is my it is up there with probably the most disgusting vile thing i've ever seen like and i've seen a lot of like Cr- like crazy body horror and this is up there with some of the this makes this honestly makes the fly look like a fucking care bears movie <laughs> i'm not even joking like oh there's shit in this in that movie the substance that you will not even think you could have ever s- have seen in your life yeah i'm skipping um, this one <laughs> and it's two and a, it's two and a half hours of it by the way oh god it's two oh, and a half boy. hours yeah, it's, two yeah, hours yeah, it's yeah there's a lot, so yeah. I'm honestly, this one. I don't. I honestly don't think Terrifier three because I'm hearing a lot of stuff about that. I'm not even sure if that will be as gross as this. I guess uh, Art the Clown himself actually threw up on production during a scene. David Howard Thornton. Yeah, it was so gory he threw up. <sighs> I, I don't know. The second one was was tough to stomach too. Yeah. So. I don't know if I should be surprised or not because he has played Art the Clown for the second time. That's the third time. He's, he's the third been time. playing yeah. that been same been kind of role for a, for a, a while. Yeah. I kind of want him to do something a little different. Uh, he was actually in a fan series. He was actually Nightwing. That's cool. I didn't hear about oh. that. Yeah, because huh. I, I feel I like he he's, played Nightwing, or maybe he played Death. He has Pro. played a lot of like silent killer types. Yeah, and I think yeah. I think he can be more than that. Yeah, I'm ninety percent sure he was Nightwing. If not, he played Deathstroke in that same series. Huh. Okay. Which would make more sense. For like Art the Clown and stuff, mm-hmm. Deathstroke would make a lot more sense. Right. Yeah, oh. are we coming by twenty tens and twenty twenties next week? Uh, no, we are doing no. The We're only top... halfway through the decade, but yeah. <laughs> we're doing the top ten, twenty tens, and then after the t- after we're done with that, the top five, twenty twenties. Yeah. Oh, so twenty tens next week, and then twenty twenties. Um, no, the it's same week. week, but we're gonna same week. Yeah, that's we're gonna we're finish off the twenty tens. Yeah, and then we'll discuss the twenty twenties. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah. I will say one, one of the movies on my list, I have two movies at one spot. Yeah. And you all know which movie it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. so, um, so, yeah, uh, join us for the um, next the week. The finale. Uh, uh, yeah, of the, yeah, of the madness of more great sci-fi movies. So this will be fun. So are you guys ready for trivia? Yep. Yeah. Uh, by the way, he played the Joker, David Howard. Uh, oh, okay. Joker. oh, yeah. That yeah. makes a lot more sense. Hopefully yeah. he had to speak. Yeah. Right. I I'm would sure hope he, so. I'm sure he would. <laughs> right. Trivia, this one intrigues me. This is worth three points. Okay. Okay. Which 80s animated movie was co-written by Logan director James Mangold? Oh. I have no clue. Wow. But, um, Judging off my, because eighties, eighties was not in terms of animation was kind of was not really s- the strongest decade for Disney. That gave a lot of other animation. I will give a clue to, if you guys want a clue about that, but it will cost it down to two points. I don't think uh, this is a Disney movie, John. Um, yeah, when did Rescuers Down Under come out? 
that was ni- uh, that was 1977. Was the rescue? Are, are you talking? No, about... not not the rescuers. I mean, the rescuers down under. That was 90. 90 that was 1990. 90. Okay, so it's not. I okay. don't think it's that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I I think I think we need a clue. What do you guys think? If you guys all agree. It's been a while since we've asked for a clue. <laughs> but yeah, you guys all have to agree about the clue because I'll they'll knock it down. A yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do. Yeah. It it is a Disney movie. Okay. It is. Uh, oh. Okay. Okay. So uh, can I so, look up a date for a movie? Okay. 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 Because there's only. I'm gonna do it so you can see that I'm not okay. trying to. Because yes. there's only three Disney movies I could think of. Uh, well, actually, make that four. Uh, let's see. It was the Fox and the Hound, the Black Cauldron, the Great Mouse Detective, and the Little Mermaid. Those were the four Disney animated movies I could think of. Oh, and Oliver Company. I'm sorry. There's five. So, hmm. You know what? Any of you guys that actually guess, I guess, uh, uh, I think we're all going to have pretty much our different answers. So. so, wait, which ones did you just list off again? Because I, I, I think I have my answer. Did you say um, uh, Great Mouse Detective? Great, great mouse detective. Yeah, um, I mean that would may it might maybe make sense. The great mouse detective. That's the what one that the, I'm currently um, going with. <laughs> um, it's a great movie. I, I, I want to beat Matthew on this one. <laughs> we we got to figure it I out. I want to beat him too. <laughs> I want to beat him too. What was the one with the dog? Um, the bunch of dogs in the '80s. It was Oliver and Company. Oliver yeah. and Company. Okay. I don't think it's Oliver and Company. Um, I don't. Th- I last time I checked, it wasn't Black Cauldron. Um, no. Damn, James Mangold must have been working w- way back then. Yeah, yeah. Um, I this was his second thing he ever did. Wow. Oh, okay. So in terms that's... of producing, directing, anything. It's probably All not right. Little Mermaid. Um, no. No way. I would say Great Mass Detective. That's what I'm going with. Yeah. I'm going to be so mad if we get this wrong. Great what Ma- other uh, movies my, released? But I, my what? second choice would be Fox like, and the Hound. But okay. Uh, that, that would... That, that would make the most. List stuff. them off all again, John. Yes. Okay. Um, Box and the Hound, The Black Cauldron, no. The Great Mouse Detective, okay. Oliver and Company, and The Little Mermaid. Okay. Mm. I think that, that it's either Fox and the Hound or Great Mouse Detective. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to pick one. I know. <laughs> I'm going Great Mouse Detective. <sighs> no. Actually, no. Fox and the Hound. I'm changing Ooh. it. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ah. We're gonna be so mad. It was a great mouse. Detective. Yeah, like I, it's got it. I feel like it has to be one of those two. I, this I want to so go with Great Mouse Detective because I feel like if you do, you're gonna make me choose. Yeah, I know. I, cause like that's what my gut tells me. I just feel like Fox and the Hound is so much more James Mangold. Yeah, <laughs> I mean if oh, the way it, oh, yeah, could it be though. Great oh, Mouse Detective my, doesn't really have oh that. My God. At least, not the amount. But, you know, you can't see on camera, but he is stressed. Dylan is stressed <laughs> over there. Well, okay, like, cause I'm trying to pick the two movies apart, but it's been so fucking long since I've seen Fox and the Hound. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, like I've watched both Logan and Great Mouse Detective this year. Literally watched Great Mouse Detective just the other week. But I just wasn't paying attention so at the great. very start. I love the Great Mouse Detective. So good. Yeah. It, it it is. I I love it. It it got me in the mood to watch more Sherlock yeah. stuff. Um, but, oh boy. God. Do you go with I'm, your head or do you go for your gut? Yeah, I know. I I'm I'm going with Great Mouse Detective because I just feel like the action oh, and adventure is a lot crap. more present make across me all oh, of mangled stuff. Man. I feel like although it's a if it's if need if need drills too will be right then we're gonna all of us yeah no that's the thing all of us like feel a lot better we could we could be completely fucking wrong neither yeah. of us gets it we, we could <laughs> that, that's yeah. one of the reasons why I want to go oh, with the other boy. one just in case because I'm curious you know what D- Dylan I love you but I dude think, that's fine if you want to go with Garrett go with I, Garrett I, I, I would be happy I if either I'll, of us I think get I'll it. go with the Fox of the Hound because I can see that as James Mangle's style yeah, yeah. so. Could I take it for a reduce? Uh, could I get like a reduce point for it if it is Fox and the Hound? Not full points for it, like half a point of one point since it's currently two. Because okay. I, if it's Fox and the Hound, I don't get it. I at least narrowed it down to the two. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Fox and the Hound on this one. None of you get it right. Fuck you! What? Oliver and Company. 
Are you kidding me? No, no I am but, not. Wow. <laughs> Oliver and Company? <laughs> Dang. It was written by the guy who did Logan. Yes. And There were um, three co-writers. He was one of them. And uh, Like, seriously? <laughs> Matthew was victorious. Wow. I watched that movie so many times on VHS tape. I love that movie, too. Never would have thought. <laughs> Golly! I'm actually really shitty because I just fucking remember that I saw a tweet about this like four weeks ago. <laughs> you know, you know I saw something look, about it. You know what? Here's the thing: it's since none of movie. us got it right, yeah. none of us can be mad that we didn't get that. Wait, is that in the trivia section? Uh, I believe it was. Yeah, I see it. it's on the top, and I believe it was in trivia too. D did you make sure that it was in trivia? I in there, I if it's not in trivia, we deserve points yep. for it. Yeah, we do. Animation okay. screenplay, James Mangold. Yeah, I believe it said, like, uh, this was one of the first credits. If it's only a credit, but it's not in the trivia section of that movie, I That's think that crazy. question should be fucking thrown out. I agree. I'm not, I'm, this isn't me being a sore winner, by the way. <laughs> so, I know. I know. <laughs> loser, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. What are we looking up? <laughs> If it, was if it was in the fucking trivia, because if it's not in the trivia, it's disqualified. Because you said oh, yeah, one of the only fucking qualifiers for uh, for this thing is it has to be in the trivia section. True, crap. I hope it was. I thought I'd seen it in there. But... I'm gonna have to come up with a new trivia question. Do 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 do. I kind of hope it's not in there. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I want retribution, goddammit! Oh, Garrett's doing some studying, too. Yeah, I'm not seeing it either. Crap, I thought yes! I thought it was here, too. We deserve points, then! Uh, no, I, there's a new question. They still should have the points, though. Or, no, no, because we didn't get it. Fuck right. off. <laughs> Never yeah, mind. Sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> okay. Matthew just lied on national camera. <laughs> national <laughs> no, camera. No, it, it's not that he lied. He just didn't look hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't meet one of the own, uh, one of the criteria he set for him fucking self. <laughs> Literally, one of the only rules. Is it or? It, it, or uh, I feel like it's whatever Matthew comes up with. Because we'll we could have researched it this entire week for a question that got disqualified. True. It's I. It's either he comes up with it within the next like minute, or we get points. At least one. I, I'm, already, I'm already on a movie. All right. Okay. What's the category? 80s crime. Oh, well, I'm fucked. <laughs> hey. Who knows? I'm out. I, might not, I might not be that bad at this. <clears throat> Uh, I'll say whatever Garrett says. <laughs> <I'm> Wait, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, viewers and listeners, we get a redemption round. <laughs> All right. Since that one does not count. This isn't trivia. What 80s crime movie was re-released in 2003? The studio wanted rap music to be used in the movie, and the, the director refused. I don't know 80s crime no movies. I'd have to idea. pick from a list. <laughs> hmm. It is one that of the was most a popular movies. What's the difficulty? That was a curveball. Um, What's the difficulty? 1983. Uh, two. Two? Yeah. That's not too bad. Uh, 80s crime movie. I could be an idiot and say Beverly Hills Cop, but that was not 83. <laughs> um, <clears throat> That's re more like action. Re-released in 2003. Oh, man. Um, oh, boy. You're going to kick yourself if you don't get this one. Because I'm guessing it's one of your favorite movies. Oh, oh great. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go just through a, a generic list on Google. <laughs> Good choice. So do I get to look up stuff too? Or... If you want to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can type in eighties crime movies. Oh, I was gonna look up a specific. I think, one of yeah, <laughs> almost should because uh, because he you messed up the first question. Yes, <laughs> I know. I'll double eighty three. Okay. I'm gonna figure out next week's question right tonight before um, we leave. Eighties hmm. crime movie. Hmm. Wait. Um, oh, I think Gary knows it. I don't know if this technically counts as crime. Um, honestly, it pro probably doesn't. Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say risky business, but um, hmm. I don't think that really is a crime, unless it is. And I'm good old young Tom Cruise. Wait, did dancing, you say dancing in his bun shirt? Say the question one more time. What eighties crime movie? Was re-released in 2003. Was. Okay. Like a 20th anniversary? 
I'm not saying if it was 20th or not, because I would give the year away. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Okay. But the studio wanted to use rap music in it, and the director said no. Okay. I got my answer. Okay. I... This time I'm going along with you guys. <laughs> 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 we deserve to. Uh, we deserve the fucking devices for this fucking episode. You fucked us yes, over. Yes, we did. Uh, <laughs> uh, tech- this, yeah, this was technology a Technology the best thing ever. Dude, I have no fucking idea what this is. <laughs> also, I did. I didn't know that David Howard Thornton was the uh, the main one in the movie that came out in 2022. Yeah, yeah I didn't no, know that. No one remembers. Interesting. It. Isn't he playing Peter Pan in the? Oh no, he's playing Steamboat Willie. That's yeah. right. It's Steamboat oh Willie. No, and, his and guess, the, the character not, is Steamboat Willie. And guess who's not watching it? <laughs> <laughs> Both of us are. None of us are watching it. Uh, the me, fuck do you mean none of us? <laughs> me and Garrett. I'm still me, over here. Me, me and Garrett. The thing is, though, like... Everybody got their guess? Crime guessing? movies. John, do you have your guess? Oh, my nope. God. No? Okay. I'm going with Garrett says. Okay. <laughs> and and be- I'm, I'm going to just throw this into the wind, and it, I definitely know this is not going to be right. Witness the Harrison Ford movie. Scarface. Oh, you know what? Oh, you know <laughs> what? That... He said it's not that hard. <laughs> you know Scarface, what? yeah, yeah. Twenty years. It's gotta be Scarface. Got to be. There's no way that it isn't Scarface. Is that your yeah, final it, answer? It, it probably is. It's mine. But... It's... That's our final answer. I think it's all of ours. I guess. Yeah. It's gotta be Scarface. This is redemption. Fucking go. So we got it right. <laughs> Yay! Did we get two points for that? I couldn't. Thank God. <laughs> and next week, I double checked to make sure it wasn't trivia. <laughs> Next week is 90s disaster movies. 90s disaster. Okay. 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 Well, that would be <laughs> Thank you for looking easier. it up. All right. <laughs> okay, that was God the trip that went on longer than it should have, but And I will let you guys know now. I don't apologize. <laughs> I, I, I Me will, neither. I will let you guys know now. The movie next week is not Twister. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thank you for letting us know. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what else it could be. It could be Armageddon. Yeah, I was going to say Armageddon. It, 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 it could be Independence Day. It could be any other disaster movie of the 90s. But yeah, we are jumping into 2000 sci fi movies. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Yep. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, uh, Dibs, I'm going before Matthew, by the way. Cool. Um, <laughs> I guess, keeping with the tradition of the series, I guess I'll. Yeah, I'll I mean, might as well go this in the up. Um, yeah, there were a lot of <laughs> there were a lot of good choices I could have made with this. Um, but uh yeah, starting with number ten in two thousand sci fi. Um obviously we ha- more, have more of an attachment with this decade because we were all born at this time. Right. And um we probably grew up on a lot of these movies. So um I was born in the early nineties, what you're talking about. <laughs> well true, but you Yeah. Well, grew I mean, up in, all of us were around in the 2000s. All decade. Were, yeah. and I didn't always start watching movies until like 2005 on my own. Yeah, sure. All of us were around in the 2000s. Um, John was just born in the 30s. <laughs> uh, 1830s? <laughs> yeah, 2000 sci-fi was Shush. carried on um, the boom of uh, the 90s uh, science fiction trend with movies like The Matrix and stuff continuing with a lot of sequels, but we also got a lot more... Um, also got a lot more um, bigger with it. Um, <clears throat> we got more uh, animation, science fiction, uh, especially now with CG becoming much more popular. Right. And, um, yeah, <clears throat> we got a lot of really interesting movies in this time. Um, so starting with number 10, um, this is one of those movies that I appreciate more than I enjoy myself, but I because of how low budget this movie was and for what it was able to accomplish with very little i'm gonna have to go with primer for number 10 um this is one one of the most confusing complex indie indie films that i've ever seen it might be the most complex just because of how much is going on in this film and how little i understand of it of the few times i've seen it um it's if you don't know what it's about it's about two um two inventors who uh are trying to create a machine at first that will reduce the weight of an object 
and then they realize that it has temporal effects on the object and they could actually use the machine or the box as they call it as a time machine and so they use the time machine on themselves and they start creating copies of themselves um multiple different multiple copies in, of themselves going back and forth in time and that creates um just this whole chaotic thing going on where they at first they try to profit using this this ability that they've had that they have and then they use it to basically turn on each other and become the worst versions of themselves so um primer is just this this movie was made on like seven thousand dollars and it it definitely looks like it it definitely looks like it was made for an extremely low budget but it's not that it's not really the production value that I mean the movie is pretty well shot mm-hmm. for a movie that cost this much it was actually shot on film um <clears throat> it, it actually it does look pretty nice um it's got it's got a lot of uh they had clearly had a lot of um different equipment to break up the shots more and you know create more dynamic movement with the camera there's a lot of dolly movement and slider shots in this um but and the acting i don't think is particularly great um no, i no. feel like the there i feel like because um, i'm pretty sure shane caruth was the guy who wrote directed and pretty yeah, much, yeah. He, this was his baby like completely um and you can definitely tell that his acting he's not really much of an actor because a, a lot of the acting in this is pretty is pretty monotone it's not it's this is not definitely not the kind of movie that you watch for the emotional the emotional core of it like yeah. some other sci- science fiction this is made for people who are hardcore into this kind of science fiction and are into the idea of time travel and the logistics of what you could actually do with this ability and they didn't and, dumb it down at all no no that's what i appreciate <laughs> the most about this movie they don't dumb it down at all they actually and most of the dialogue involves them talking about i mean most of the dialogue does feel very star trekky with a lot of techno babble and stuff like that but i appreciate you can definitely tell that they knew or had some idea of what they were talking about um, yeah. um i had looked it up i don't remember exactly what the degrees were i believe he had an engineering degree he had a, yeah. soft, like a, he had a software yeah. engineering uh he was uh going to school for software engineering i believe um, someone else on the set at. had a physics degree too yeah, yeah. um yeah. you can definitely tell that everyone who was involved with this in terms of like the writing and the story um were very much were you know well versed in this subject yeah this is honestly of all the time travel movies i've seen this is the one that where it feels the most like this could actually be realistic like it feels the most grounded in terms of how it displays time travel um at least that i've seen you mean not back Um, to the future (laughs) <laughs> sadly no but um no delorean yeah, yeah obviously like, Do you like see I those said, boxes no style <laughs> yeah like i said this 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 movie f- feels more like a puzzle than an actual movie to me like it, it's just mm. it's really fun to try to figure out everything because i still don't know what the fuck is happening for the majority of the film <laughs> i have like the bare logistics of what's actually going on i i, I need to watch at least like 20 more <laughs> viewings of this to actually get some and i still am watching like youtube videos explaining like the the diagram of how everything works i understood it for the most part on the first watch it's yeah um <laughs> okay nerd god I, yes i am I <laughs> yeah. Not. Uh, yeah yeah we get it this, got it so <clears throat> like i said this, it's more a movie that i that i appreciate more than i like will actually sit down and like get totally well versed like invested in but like I, when a movie is this low budget and is doing so much with it, um, this movie does so much with so little that I mean, I have to give it. You have to give it credit for that. Um, even if you don't enjoy the film, you can at least you can at least feel the passion and the intellect behind it. Um, mm. And I and think, appreciate the impact it had on indie film. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, they of what they managed to do with it. Um, so yeah, moving on. Number nine, if my phone will load this up, 
Um, this is a movie that I feel like a lot of people get turned off by the ending. Um, they enjoy the first two acts of this movie, uh, and then the third act kind of ruins it for them. But honestly, the third act does not ruin this film at all for me, and this is Sunshine. Um, this is directed by da Danny Boyle, who is one of my favorite directors. Um, this came out in 2007. It stars um, a lot of famous people now. Um, Killian Murphy, uh, Chris Evans, Rose Byrne, Michelle Yeoh, Cliff Curtis. This, this has got a lot of people in it. Um, and, oh, Hirika, uh, Hiriki Sonata is in this, too, uh, oh. who is huge right now. So, yeah, th this movie's got a ton of people that you know. But, um, yeah, if you don't know, this movie is about this team of scientists who are going because in this in this world or this uh in this universe that the film creates the sun is dying out and they're trying to reboot it using this huge payload of uh this big nuclear device that will explode when it reaches the sun and it'll restart it basically um so and they don't know if it'll work exactly and they run into a bunch of problems uh including the previous team, which was, uh, this team is named Icarus 2, so obviously there was an Icarus 1, um, and there's a lot going on with that that I, that I don't really want to spoil. So, yeah, Sunshine, I think, is super well directed. I love how Danny Boyle directs things, um, just brings a real kinetic energy to it that a lot, not a lot of directors do. Um, I love the, the, the effects look great, even for 2007. Um, the acting is top notch from Killian Murphy and Chris Evans. This is one of my favorite Chris Evans performances. Um, there's a lot of <clears throat> uh, suspense. The music in the film, I cannot bring this film up without the, bringing up the music. It's just, it's become iconic at this point. And many other films and trailers still use it to this day. Um, uh, including Wonder Woman 1984 used this music, like one of the pieces from this film. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, one more famous pieces. I can't remember what it was called. But I did not know that. It Interesting. Mm -hmm. I yeah. got it. I need to rewatch um, it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Sunshine. Um, I but it does bringing up the third act. It definitely does feel like it does take a little bit of a sharp turn. Um, in the third act involving uh another character, and <clears throat> I feel like it does change the film up uh to where it was initially going, but I. I don't think the film is ruined by that at all, and um, I feel like it 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 provides a nice uh, break of pace uh, for the film. I think um, it, it doesn't it does not ruin the experience of watching it for me, and I think the ending, uh, like the actual ending itself, is very beautiful. And um, yeah, this is just a really solid, uh, simple science fiction film. Maybe uh, I don't definitely. remember, but doesn't it go in like a more horror direction? For the it does. Act? Yeah, it does. Um, and speaking of horror, my <laughs> number eight is a film that also has a very dev divisive ending, and another film from two thousand seven, The Mist. Um, this oh, is of course yeah. the Stephen King. <laughs> this is uh, the Stephen King adaptation by one of my favorite directors who have only directed four films: Frank Darabont. This man I, has directed only four feature films, and I love every single one of them. Even um, the one with Jim Carrey, The Majestic. I, I really like The Majestic. I don't care what anyone says. This is like me with um, Gareth Edwards. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Frank Darabont. Man I, man, I wish this guy would come back to direct a movie because this man is so goddamn good. This is the guy who brought us... The Shawshank Redemption, oh, The damn, Green Mile, yeah. two of my all-time favorite movies. And um, The Mist, I think, it may not be on the same level as some of those other movies that he's done, but I still think this is a really great, simple horror film that has a lot of science fiction elements. Um, it takes place primarily in a grocery store that's surrounded by this mist of creatures. And... Um, the thing about the film is that there are two versions of it, um, and I have the Blu-ray of it um, that has an intro by Frank Darabont, <clears throat> who initially wanted to do the film in black and white, um, and the film came out in color. Um, but the Blu-ray has a black and white version, and watching the black and white version, you can really tell because uh, in the intro itself, he said that he wanted to approach this film kind of like 
a, a 1950s uh, Ray Harryhausen movie with kind of the same kind of creature effects that look almost stop motion in a way, even though this film has CG. And I will admit the CG in the film is not great. Um, the, the creatures don't look real by any stretch. But I think that they're well designed, in my opinion. And when you watch it in black and white, you can definitely tell that influence of Ray Harryhausen uh, science fiction monster films. And it really does give the sense more of like a Twilight Zone type of movie, especially, you know, with the already established plot. Yeah. But um, no, I think the acting, the acting in the film is great. Thomas Jane uh, delivers a really great performance in this. Um Marsha Gay, Marsha Gay Harden <laughs> as uh, Miss Mrs. Carmody, one of the most hateable, evil <laughs> fucking characters in any goddamn movie. And got, um, what happens to her at the end? I just <laughs> I want to get up and clap every time what what she gets hap- uh, what she gets near the end of this movie. I she plays that character so well, and she is so good at being the most evil religious bitch you've ever seen <laughs> she's um, up there with that girl from harry potter from uh, yeah Florida. easily oh yeah. my god yeah. um it's up there with um frank derenbach really create is good at creating characters that that are well acted but you also just cannot stand like um percy in the green mile or some of the other like the warden in shawshank mm. um he's so good at that um the ending of this movie is one of the most talked about endings in all of cinema history. And I won't <laughs> get into it if you, in case you haven't seen it, yeah, yeah. it is, it will leave you spellbound. It will leave you shaken for days. Um, yeah. It is, it is the thing or that questioning will, questioning your life choices. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's the thing that will make or break this movie for you. Yeah, and yeah. everyone, most people I know like the movie, up until the ending, and then the <laughs> ending makes them like, oh, fuck this movie. I hate it. Um, I love the ending of this movie. I really? think it's, it's, it is shocking. It is tragic. Okay. But yeah. I think it, it really, um, it, even Stephen King really liked how Frank Derva ended the movie because the end, the book has basically no real ending. Mm. The book stops as soon as they leave the store and they're just driving off. Yeah. So yeah, Frank Darabont, okay. this ending was his idea, and I think it was, it was, it was ballsy. Yeah. But I think I think it paid off. Dramatic. Um, yeah. I, I, it it I, is dramatic. It definitely is. Um. Yeah. I, I I agree that it paid off. I, speaking I of traumatic, uh, the scene with the spiders in this movie, um, giant freaking <laughs> spiders, um, hate it. It's just really <laughs> creepy stuff going on with those, and I yeah. The the CG is not great, but I really I do really like the creatures in it. And one one last thing I'll talk about is that I like how the film has almost no musical score until the when, until the creatures come out into the film, and pretty much the entire film is very silent and very quiet. Um, and I I really appreciate about that film. Um, so yeah, the mist. Um, the ending. Uh. Despite the ending, uh, I still think this is this is one of my favorite science fiction films of 2007. Right on. Right and um, on. another 2007 film. Uh, <laughs> have a, like three in a row here. <laughs> but um, this is one that not a lot of people have heard about. But I think it def- this is another time travel film. And I think it's one of the most uh, underappreciated and uh, most, uh, most uh, underlooked. And that is Time Crimes. This is a 2007 uh, Spanish film. Um, it's, uh, it is Spanish language, uh, so you'll have to deal with subtitles, but, um, this is a, this is a low budget science, uh, time travel film that deals with, it's not nearly as complicated as, uh, Primer is. It has a more simple idea, but, um, it's about a man who, um, who is living at home, um, and he gets chased by this this guy in this ra- uh, wrapped in these bandages um, with these pair of scissors, and he ends up stepping into a time machine uh, with this uh, scientist that is uh, operated by this scientist guy, and he goes back in time um, a few hours before that, and it basically creates this time loop of these different events that lead up to him uh, realizing who the bandaged man is and. Um, if if you're looking hard into the uh, my uh, 
reading between the lines of what I'm saying, you probably can tell what is going on here, mm. but I won't get into it because I think this film is really smart. Um, it's really intense. Um, the acting is tr- uh, terrific. Um, and it's just a, it's really well directed. It's just a really fun, um, at times disturbing. Um, but in, in all, all in all, it's just a very fun little idea um, that they really take advantage of, and they explain the time travel thing very well in this. Um, uh, it's it's much more of an enjoyable film for me uh, than uh, Primer is, and that's why it's higher up on the list. Um, so, and it's much easier to follow, like I said. All of this um, to my list. Yeah, this is this is a very Check fun. It it's it's kind yeah. of it, it's got a lot of thriller and horror elements, but it okay. it at its heart, it's very much a science fiction film. So uh, yeah, definitely check that out. Um, Number six is um, uh, one my first 2009 film on the list. I think it's the only two, the 2009 film on the list. It was very hard to choose from that year. But um, number six is going to be District 9. Um, this is one of the favorites of this decade in terms of science fiction, just in terms of how um, it basically it instantly shot up Neil Blomkamp as the director to look out for. Um Unfortunately, uh, Neil Blomkamp kind of went downhill after this movie. Um, even though I liked, I like Elysium. Um, I did not like Chappie at all. It wasn't um, that good. No, Chappie, in my opinion, is, is a terrible film. Um, I haven't watched Elysium yet. Like, Elysium is pretty good. It's yeah, not. I, it's not as good as J- District Nine, but it's good. Um, I've got the DVD. I just haven't but, watched it. But um, Gran Turismo, I did like. However, that came out last year. Um, yeah, I've not watched it, that yet either. <clears throat> it's it's pretty good. Um, I hope Neil, Neil Blomkamp tries to stick in that lane um, so he doesn't try to do um, – I think he. I think he's not only good at sci-fi. I, I, he, I don't think he has to keep doing sci-fi. Well, I know he's working on his... District 10. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I am very excited to see that, though. We'll see how it turns out. But, yeah, District 9 is a great mix of all different types of genres, making it – um, taking the idea of alien invasion and making it something that's very grounded and very relevant to today's society yeah. in terms of immigration, terrorism, all that stuff, making it feel like you were part of this environment with all the documentary aspects, especially in the opening. Um, the opening, like, 10 minutes of the film with the like the found footage kind of style is one of my favorite like opening sequences of any film in this decade. Uh, I think it it's establishes the world and idea so well. And I think the film is just overall just a really great film. Um, I love the bond between um, the main character. Uh, I can't remember what his name was. Uh, Charlotte Toe Copley. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't, what is that character's name? It's something weird. Um, it's a really weird name. Uh, Will Wickis? Wickis Van D. Murway. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hope I, I'm pronouncing that w- right. Mouthful. Wick, Wickis. Um, and I can't remember uh, what the al- the main alien's name was. Um, but I, I really like that bond between Wickis and the, the alien. Um, and I like the bond that they share. They Initially, Wickis is very much against these creatures. Yeah. But um, over the course of the movie, he starts to become one. Um so uh and i'm not really spoiling anything by that i'm sure the trailer gave that away so um yeah the cgi in the film for the budget that this was made on is incredible Mm. the action scenes are great um the the alien creatures are very well designed and uh yeah it's it's a very it's a very smart movie and it's a very it's very crowd pleasing one too and i'm i'm there it's no clue why this film um got all, all the awards nominations and wins that got in the year that this, this came out yeah so yeah moving on to number five uh 2008 film um and one of the in my opinion one of the greatest found footage films ever made cloverfield um yeah one of the one of the most memorable experiences i've ever like i had uh in my younger years at the theater um i saw this in imax when Holy this came crap. out, um, I was like eight years old when I saw this. Oh, wow. This movie, I remember how loud this movie was. Um, seeing this, um, it was, it was one of the greatest theatrical perform- uh, experiences I'd ever had. Um, What's I the still- goat, Matt Reeves? Yeah, uh, Matt Reeves. Uh, this movie put him on the map in terms of directing. Um, 
Yeah. You might, um, a lot of people, when it comes to found footage films, are not a fan of the idea that they have, whatever happens in the film, the character who's filming just never puts the camera down. And that is the only thing that's kind of distracting about the found footage in this film is that there really are a few mo- a few moments where the, they really don't need to be filming. Right. But um, other than that, though, like, this film is just a thrill ride. It is, this film, like, establishes the characters in the first 15 minutes, and then right then and there, the film just goes to 100 in a millisecond. Yeah. Like, everything <laughs> that you could possibly expect to see in a monster film happens, like, right away. Um, yeah, uh, I think the, the special effects in the film are terrific. Um, you can definitely tell that this had money behind it with J.J. Abrams. Um, the, uh, all this, there's so many thrilling sequence sequences in the film that it's hard to really find, uh, the most thrilling, um, has one, I think this movie's PG-13, right? Yeah. I think so, yeah. This movie has one of the most shocking and uh, disturbing death scenes in any PG-13 film that I've ever seen with the with Lizzie Kaplan um, when she gets bit by one of those creatures and then is dragged behind that plastic oh, yeah. sheet. Yeah, I totally oh my god, it. it's dude. been minutes. Since um, I've yeah, just explosion of blood, <laughs> and I'm just shocked that a PG-13 got away with that, um, especially human blood. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they allow gore now, like Guardians of the Galaxy three. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice had a lot of blood. In yeah, yeah. Sh- shockingly. Yeah, I've noticed um, they allow gore, especially if it's not human. Yeah, <laughs> just turn it green and yeah, yeah. yeah. PG film. Um, but yeah, uh, Cloverfield <laughs> is just awesome. Um, yeah, when I first watched it, for some reason, I had a weird feeling in my stomach when I watched it. it I did love it, but man, my stomach felt weird for it, some reason. It, <laughs> Joel a lot of flashbacks. For a lot of people, uh, <laughs> when, of camp, when, you know, a lot of people I've known get motion sick when they watch movies like this where yeah. the camera is just shaking all over the place. I've never really had that issue with movies like this, uh, not with found footage films, at least. Only film I ever got motion sick was Gravity, where they're spinning scene. I never got sick during Gravity, but yeah, um, but I can understand it. But um, yeah, moving on from Cloverfield, uh, now moving, man, it was really tough uh, not <laughs> yeah. putting this one higher. But there were uh, three other movies that I feel like uh, mattered more to me personally. Mm. But um, number four, uh, Children of Men. Um, one of the finest films of this century so far, um, truly. This film is a masterwork by Alfonso Cuaron. Um, yeah, the some of the greatest cinematography and camera work that we've ever seen in any movie. Um, the shot where they're inside the car and they're being attacked is one of the greatest sequences I've seen ever in a film. Um, the acting is phenomenal from Clive Owen to... Um, Chiwetel Ejiofor, Julianne Moore, uh, Michael Michael Caine in the brief moment that he's in the film for. Um, not only is the cinematography great, the production is so great. Um, it's just a really it's a really touching story. Um, it's a really emotional story about what if in this world that has pretty much become um, infertile with human birth and childbirth that uh, one that one person is uh is the last person to maybe give birth in this in in the planet and um it's it's just a race against time and it's a race uh to save this person and it's just a movie that celebrates the joy of human life and um it's just a really it's a really touching film and it's thrilling it's got everything that you could ask for in a movie like this and uh it's children of men if you haven't seen this movie do yourself a favor and watch it that was so, the one that I was trying to remember to watch this past week. Yeah. I totally blanked on it. We'll do a review rewind of it sometime in the next yeah, couple I, months. Yeah, I didn't even get okay, a chance okay. to watch District 9, Orchard or a Man, which yeah, I, I wish I did. Yeah, I really needed a There are a lots of great movies I need to watch, absolutely. Yeah. I've got both, so. Uh, so uh, moving on more. to number three, um, this, is a, this is a movie that, from a director that I had to put up on this list. Um, and uh, this, this does count as sci-fi, even though, uh, the idea of the film might not uh, persuade you to that, but 
Number three is the Prestige. Um, yes. Okay. One of yeah. Uh, yeah I was going to put that on my list. I had to put a Christopher Nolan on <laughs> yeah. this list somehow. And uh, Chris, I had Presti- no idea this was sci-fi. It, it, it is. Does, yeah. It no is idea. a science then fiction film. I looked it film. up, and I was like, "Yay, um, it's going to be on there." <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the Prestige um, is another uh, masterpiece from Christopher Nolan. That has uh, two outstanding lead performances from uh, Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman playing multiple roles uh, in this duel between magicians that involves uh, not just elements of fantasy, but also science fiction in the way everything is revealed. Yeah. It has one of the greatest, as one of his greatest twists ever. Um, there's just so many great twists and turns and reveals of information that really just keep you, this, fil- this is a film that keeps you guessing from beginning to end. And <laughs> yeah. it just, it just keeps doing it to you. Like any good magician, or magic act should do to you. Um, it's a film that is just a thrilling, fun, and also um, kind of a, it's a challenging film because you, if like this film makes you question the character's motives and ethics all throughout. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, come to the end of it, you're not really sure who to really root for. Um, and it, I think it, it's a brilliant film that way. Um, so yeah, number three is the prestige. This isn't really me being a fanboy, but is, are there really any movies you can say that Nolan doesn't make a masterpiece of? Because like, literally every film he does is a masterpiece. I'm not. I love Christopher Nolan, but I'm not gonna say that every film of his is a masterpiece. Yeah. Um, there's a few that I, there's a few that um, that do have some pretty serious flaws. But I'm not yeah. the biggest fan of Dunkirk or Memento. I, I love both of those, yeah. but um, I did Memento was really good in my. <clears throat> um, I, but I, I yeah, really number like two. Um, I yes, I did put an animation on this list. Yeah, because this is a film that's very near and dear to my. Oh, heart. I know what it is. Okay, Wally. Um, oh, never mind. <laughs> this is a. What did you think I was gonna? I put? thought it was gonna be Treasure Planet. No, that's on your list. Well, really? you, no shit, it's on my list. But we talked about I, Treasure Planet. I before. like Treasure Planet, but it's not Wally. No, I, mean, I, I, I get you. I get you. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I was wrong on that. I should Wally have said shit. <laughs> is, uh, it's, it, pro- it might be Pixar's done so many classic and masterful films. Yeah. Wally, in many ways, is their most impressive film, just in terms of how much of the film is told visually without mm. any dialogue. I mean, the first 20 minutes of the film where Wally is just on the planet alone doing, uh, uh, doing hit what he does uh, with all the garbage that uh, the humans leave on Earth. Um, it's one of the most, like, right away, you just love, you just love the look of the film. Um, as dirty as it is, it has, you know, when it, it starts off very sepia tone, very ugly mm-hmm. on Earth, and it's supposed to be. And then when you get up to outer space and the the giant um, space ship i can't remember what they call it but um uh, it was by and large that's yeah, all i remember <laughs> yeah it's just a, a giant pl- uh ship in space where the, all the humans live and it's one of the most it's still one of the most relevant films that they've made just yeah. in terms of all the messaging and commentary that <laughs> yeah. is still very much i think is gonna come true i've not um, seen wally you've not Are seen you Wally? Fucking kidding me come Matthew, on how did you not see wally dude oh fuck god almighty what the f- Fuck! <laughs> what is the matter with you? What? I'm. Uh, I'm gonna keep going. Um, <laughs> fuck me. Okay. Um, Can I walk off? I'm doing it for both of us. Yeah, <laughs> we're both walking off. Goodbye. Don't leave me here. No, Come on, Garrett. I'll listen, but I'm gonna be down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm walking Wally. down the hall with you. Might be my turn. Let me know no. it's my turn. No, don't leave me. <laughs> Shit. I guess you're stuck with me. <laughs> oh God! The loser who hasn't seen Wally. <laughs> God. God damn it. Um, yeah, Wally. Uh, this is this is a film that emotionally gets to me. Um, I Eve, the relationship between Eve and Wally, even without any real dialogue between them and just them saying their names back and forth to each other. Um, it's just. It's just you want to put special. the middle finger on camera, Dylan? <laughs> you want to? There, there you go. <laughs> it, you can see it. You were flipping off Garrett, not me. 
bullshit. I was flipping off Garrett. Okay. I specifically okay. aimed. Matthew. I was looking through the fucking. Matthew, you, 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 you. You have homework. You're, to do. you're hot, seriously. Your hot take on Toy Story was bad enough, but Wally, God, Dude. Matthew, you haven't even seen it. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, please continue, um, Garrett, with your amazing review of Watch Wally. it before this year is <laughs> over. They uh, they want me to watch Spaceballs. Watch Wally before yeah. this year is over. Sir, buddy. you were campaigning for him to watch Blood and Honey, but you won't fucking watch Wally. <laughs> Blood and Honey, I passed on it now, so we're not talking about it anymore. Moving oh, on, get yeah. the number one. Garrett, please, uh, please continue. Okay, please. <laughs> <laughs> number two is Wally. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, um, great, again, great review. In, in case you <laughs> yeah. didn't tell. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, number one. Um, this is uh, this is a film that is uh, I I watched like a decade ago, and to me, it's a film uh, that uh, is very special to me for some reason, and I'm not sure really why, but it's just a film that I can watch any day of the week, and it's one of the director's best. This is a Minority Report. Um, this is one of my one of Spielberg's most. Uh, I know critics love this film. It, this film does not get nearly enough attention when it comes to like Spielberg's best films. No, because no, I think it doesn't. This is one it of, should though. This is one of his best directed films, um, just in terms of what he does with all the effects uh, and all the technology of like all the the technology that like I n- never realized until like a few years ago. Much of it is actually pretty much here. Yeah. With all the touch screens and the uh, the motion tracking stuff, the eye scanners, um, all that stuff is somewhat rel- like here now and very current. Yeah. Um. And uh, and I can't remember what year does this take place in. Um, it's not too terribly far off either. I think like um, 2029 or something. 2029. Yeah, <laughs> we might be. Dang, I was liter- right. <laughs> um. No, I'm gonna make sure first. Oh, okay. Um, I thought you just said I was right. I was like, man, I'm good. Report. Well, it, we'll, we'll, we'll have caught up by um, then. 2054. Okay. I was <laughs> oh, right. yeah. Um, we'll definitely have caught up by that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Oh, no, that's Terminator. Uh, I, love, I love how Spielberg directs this film. I mean, Spielberg is, is just doing what Spielberg does, but um, I just love how he creates this world. I love, like, this is not usually the type of thing that, Spielberg is like most known for like hard sci-fi like this, but he's so good at it, um, especially with this one. This is another um, uh, Philip K. Dick o- yeah, novel. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite like adaptations of his, um, along with Blade Runner. Um, I love the ideas of destiny, like destiny, and you know, are we truly like, are we truly um, is what are the actions that we do truly set in stone for, for the future or, or do we have actual choice? And, um, I feel like that's a, still a very relevant thing. And it's about, you know, it's very much a part of that common phrase. Should the, should the punishment come before the crime? Um, and I think that's still very relevant. Um, Tom Cruise, I think does a fantastic job in this film. One of his best performances, yes. Max von Sydow, mm-hmm. of course is great in this. Um, Samantha Morton, who um, is not usually talked about much, but uh, as Agatha the Precog, she is amazing in this. Um, you also have a, a younger Colin Farrell, uh, also very good, um, and yeah, a f- few other people. But um, yeah, I love I love this film to death. I'm not sure why it sticks with me so much, but it's just it's just a film that d- really does speak to me. And um, not to my, it's, it's my favorite. It's my favorite. Sci-fi film of the of the two thousands. Yeah. Uh, nice. be- be- before you get to the earliest, John, there's something after we're all done that I want to briefly discuss. Okay, it's something we talked about in the chat the other day. Okay. Oh, uh, the twenty eight thing. Twenty eight thing. Oh yeah. I discuss that a little bit. Okay, I want to. I want to talk about that too. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, send the current timestamp to me. Okay. Uh, it's fifty four. Okay. I am so disappointed in you. Yeah. you. <laughs> that, that was, that, I will honestly, never get that out of my head now. After I'm surprised all how different our lists were. I figured ours would have been pretty close. So mine's very different from most of you guys? You haven't from got a single least. one on my yeah. list. Really? But I also made sure... Yeah, which was really surprising because I put some not on even my list. Like, um, not even like uh, District 9? No, okay, so... Uh, the uh, I, I'll explain how I did my list later. 
But uh, it, it's the same kind of thing that I've been doing these past couple weeks where I didn't load up on movies that I knew would be on your guys' list. I have some that are shared, or that I thought would be shared. <laughs> this is going to be, be very interesting. It will be, um, yeah. You know, 100%. I think we had two or three of the same. Only. That Only two or three, that's insane. Yeah, yeah that's why. <laughs> My wife's never going to be different, yeah. I um, wanted to talk about more, like, Films like Time Crimes that I'm yeah. sure a lot of people haven't heard of. Right, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what's funny? The fact that we were talking about how Matthew had not seen Wally, and then we put Bun Honey in the same sentence. Which, by the way, fans, yes, I'm voting Bun, Bun Honey like the plague again. Okay, going Screw to my winners. All right. Get to your list. Boom. All right. Damn you. uh, okay. All right. Um, I'm going to do have a lot of uh, a lot of apologizing uh, for for the uh, for one of the movies. I'm going to get to that in this one. So starting off, everybody at, get your pitchforks ready. Yeah, no, no, no. yeah. I Eyebrows no idea, immediately I narrowed. No idea. <laughs> how, okay, how many of my films are in this list of yours? Um, like, because he, he said see. like two or three. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Only four. Okay. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> this might be really interesting. We all might have a totally different list. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And this, uh, so at number ten, this one I'm actually surprised that you didn't actually didn't put on the list, and this is where the apologizing comes in. Star Wars: Revenge of the Sith at number ten. Yeah, I, I, you do not have to apologize for that. I'm going to tell you Re- that right I like fucking Revenge now. The, I, <laughs> I'm not a fan of the prequels. I like Revenge of the Sith. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, and, and and I know that a lot of people love Revenge of the Sith. You guys do, and yeah. I, I totally don't, respect you for that, guys. I love the film yeah, as well. Cool. I don't it, love it, but I do like it. Yeah, no, that's yeah. You're I very happy love with it. Me. It is, it is my favorite. Fucking of, better be. It is my favorite of the prequel trilogy. It's fantastic. I, I love the whole thing. Yeah, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> is the that nit- horse on the, the, the nitpick? Mm-hmm. The Darth Vader no scene. It still bothers me. It, That's the only nitpick yeah. I have with this film. I the rest, it's fine. The, I think the my fine, it's in it. character. The thing that That's still awesome. holds the film back for me, for, for the most part, because obviously you and McGregor is very good as Obi Wan. I. I think Hay- Hayden Christensen is better in this film than he was in the Attack oh, of the Oh, absolutely. Clones. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, still not... I'm not the biggest... Hay- like, I have no issue with Hayden Christensen at all. I think, I'm think i sure he's a very great guy. I just don't think... I just don't think he, for me anyway, fit the role of Anakin. For me, at least. And for a lot of other people, we'll disagree yeah, there with that. Yeah, sure. there are definitely a lot and of I, other people that I still that think the movie. romantic dialogue in these prequel movies, even in this one, are not good. I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's best in Attack of the Clones. It, it yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would do that. Has, uh, there, one there... Mov- has one movie traumatized me? Uh, Awake? Uh, Where he wakes up during open heart surgery? I have not seen that. I've That's seen, seen movie. That I've seen a Shattered Glass is a very underrated movie that Hayden Christensen yeah. is It's in. him and Jessica Alba, I think. I have not seen huh. that. Uh, yeah, it's a horror movie. Yeah. You should check yeah. it out. I, I, heard a, I heard a lot of people have more appreciation for Hayden Christensen when he showed up. Now, and, and now yeah, no, they, he, they do. But yeah. Kenobi, I, yeah. a, a lot be, this is my problem with this revisionist history that people seem to have for these prequels. Back then, it was like, this appreciation, uh, like... It seems like only our generation who re- were kids when these movies came out are the ones talking about it. A lot of other people back then were not fans of even this one still. Um, and oh, yeah. I just feel like there still needs there still needs to be discussion about from people who criticize who criticize these movies still. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I still feel like these movies are still fair to criticize. Yes, it doesn't, they are. I just I still don't. I don't care who you are, but yeah. No, the the, the it just thing... seems like everyone is ignoring all the hate, like all the criticism ba- and backlash these movies got, and I'm just not a fan of that. No, no, it's so. not a fact. Uh, um, uh, s- sorry, John. Uh, no, I'm, I oh, get no, it. you're fine, buddy. Go right ahead. <laughs> uh, uh, be, be the person who's in the fandom the most <laughs> by far. Um, no, it, it's it's not so much like people are ignoring the fact that it was hated. People are acknowledging that. Mm-hmm. Uh, like at least on like the half of the fandom that I'm on, uh, right. people are igno- are acknowledging that. But the issue is that it's an acknowledgement to people who are. It, it is that revisionist kind of thing where it's it's commonly the people who are hating on the sequels where they're like, oh well, when that's, George was in control and why. all that shit, it's like that's why. no, people still fucking hate it. People hated uh, the original Star Wars. People hated Empire. People hated Return. It's been a but thing this ma- entire fucking time. Unlike with. Fan of mess though, and not the majority. No, no. I feel like a majority of the people who watch every single Star Wars movie like the movie. 
That's yeah. my personal opinion. Yeah. Either they they like it as a Star Wars fan, or they like it as somebody who has watched Star Wars for the right. first time. Exactly. And that I'm sorry, night. Empire and Phantom Mess are not even close to the same level. They're not. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not saying that. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> let, let, I, let me be clear. I, I, figure, I, I figure. I'm just saying. Yeah. No. It, it, it's it's these people that are like, oh well, George Lucas could do no fucking wrong. And the new sequel sucks. He, no, of course he th- they're about on fucking par. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Like, like I, no, the 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 matter of the fact is, people fucking uh, like you were saying, there was a lot of fucking hate for these movies when they came out. People, uh, sane people, admit to that. It's just people don't talk about that. The people like, like our age are the people who are driving the conversations today in the fandom. And it's these same people who grew up with the movies, who have that kind of love for the movies, who are directing those kinds of conversations about the movies. Um, That's what it is. I feel like the quality of a, of a movie um, needs to be de- shouldn't be decided when it comes out. No. But should be decided, like, at least maybe a decade standing the test of time is what a movie should do yeah yeah that's absolutely. why so many people remember the good movies of the 80s or the 90s or even the 2000s like yeah yeah people remember the good ones they tend to forget the ones that were actually bad like mac and me <laughs> yeah um and a lot of people are, are, <laughs> yeah. a lot of people are, are doing that revisionist history thing with like spider-man 3 which i still don't like i'm sorry Dude, but, uh, that, that's fine. I, I, again, I grew up with that. I like it because I grew up with it, but it's a yeah. shit movie. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no, no, no hate to Sam Raimi, obviously. No. <laughs> yeah, he, he, yeah. Even he. Even yeah, no, he it was the studio. Defend you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, said, uh, yeah, but that's our conversation for another time. Yeah, uh, um, continue, John. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, 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 you're fine. Yeah, don't get don't start on Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, yeah. We, we got time for my number one. <laughs> uh, spoilers, of course. Yeah, sorry, guys. We no, all thought really do. a spoiler. Yeah. No, you're fine. Yep. But, yeah, I. I kind of knew I was going to be the only one that's going to happen at number ten. Yes. Um, <laughs> even though I do love the I do love the movie, um, there will be more star, there will be more talk about about Star Wars soon. Yes, very if soon. You know Skeleton crew. Yeah. All right. So that comes to number ten. Uh, number nine. A uh, little surprise you didn't mention this one. Uh, and my shovel on signs. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I I do like this movie. I just wouldn't put it in my top ten. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, I, yeah, I I loved it. <laughs> Um, it, it, surprisingly, I love this movie. I was so captivated by this whole movie, and I was just and when I was watching it for the very first time, I thought to myself, huh, "I'm kind of digging this one. I really like it." Um, that kind of leans more into horror a little bit too. So I'm surprised you like that. Yeah. For me, um, it's this, more sci-fi this than is, horror. This for is me. a this has been a hot topic of debate since this movie re- was released. But like the it, it has the most stupid alien species yeah. in probably any movie. Yeah. Oh. Being afraid of... No, no, he's they're, right. They're, he's going right. Going to a planet of 70% water, yeah. even though they're they're harmed and killed by water. Yeah. And the fact that they can't get through pantry or wooden doors. It, it makes so. me wonder what was on their displays when they were approaching. I, like, did you look out know. the window at any it, point? <laughs> I like the movie, but that is a... That is a... Just a... That's that's a problem. Yes, it yeah, it's glaring. Well, yeah. here here's the funny thing. As a guy that uh, honestly, the man I fear the most, and my shovel on, I'm scared of this guy. Okay, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 he's one of the most kind <laughs> people <laughs> in Hollywood. No, 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 no. I say that because you know he. he uh, for me, he's made more bad movies than good movies. Which, okay, he's an True. interesting director. Uh, he's a very interesting guy. Um, he, but, he's got uh, a certain but, range. Uh, yeah, it's always but, a, a one but, extreme. Even when Sham, <laughs> most of the, the only two movies where Shyamalan's movies were like like horrifically bad, in my opinion, were mm. The Last Airbender and After Earth. Both those movies okay, are yeah. are bad in ways that are not oh even boy, fun. The Last Airbender, After Ugh, Earth, After so, Earth is one of the so most awful. soulless so and much. unenjoyable pieces of garbage out there. I refuse, but, to, um, I refuse to watch After Earth. I it's terrible. It. It's <laughs> terrible. I need to the rewatch happening it. The happening is a masterpiece. I, I, it I, is lo- not. I love. I love the happening, <laughs> lady. <laughs> thank you. I like. I, I, not, it's a terrible movie. Of course it is, but I love watching it I and do. same thing with lady in the water lady in the water is ridiculous it is so insane <laughs> i love it though i love the happening thank you lady in the water though is just i'm not crazy seen it's crazy it's, it's just insane but boy the 2000s was a weird decade wasn't it <laughs> for Shyamalan, like went from like oscar darling to like 
last airbender in the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And also, um, I, I, I actually will defend the alien designs and, 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 the, and, and, and the water plot twist. And the reason why is because I could accept it for how the aliens got defeated, which is weird that I'm saying that I defend the it. The strength of the movie yeah. is in the performances from Mel Gibson yes. and Joaquin and yeah. all those I had no idea that Joaquin yeah. Phoenix was um, in it, and I thought, wait, that's Joaquin Phoenix. Mm-hmm. He looks so um, young. <laughs> yeah, Mel Gibson is amazing in this he film. Is, he's great. Um, I love the kids, too. Yeah, the kids are the kids are pretty good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I, I think uh, it is still one of his, M. Night's Better movies, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah, and Signs actually happened to be surprisingly my number one favorite M Night Shyamalan movie, which I did not see that coming. Uh, but yeah, I enjoy Signs. Coming in at number eight is a movie that is very underappreciated, and that is Treasure Planet. Yes. Now, to truly realize why this movie deserves a lot of appreciation, you got to understand that this was a very tough time for Disney. In the yep. 2000s. After the 90s, Renaissance was pretty much over. They got to 2000. They started with Fantasia 2000. It bombed. Then they tried with Atlantis, which it just missed the list, by the way. It just missed it. Um, I, I prefer Atlantis over Treasure Planet. but um, <coughs> well, uh, uh, oh, uh, well, I do love Atlantis, although I thought the villain was too obvious. Yeah. Honestly. Villains um, aren't great. But yeah. Uh, but, yeah. But, yeah, they try with Atlantis, so they want to do something very different, which I get credit for Disney for that, for trying to do something very different. But, unfortunately, it was – it did not perform at the box office. It wasn't appreciated at even, the time. Um, even Emperor's New Groove was not a hit at the box office. Either. No, and that's and a that comedy classic. Out. Yeah. Even though people love it, it's like – it. even when it came out, it, it still wasn't – it still – didn't do any favor, and if you know the history of Emperor's New Group behind the scenes, it's interesting. it makes it even <laughs> more fascinating. But yeah, they did with Atlantis, and then the movie did well with William and Stitch, so they got back on yeah. track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know you like stuff like The Lion King and stuff, the live action, yeah. but that's what they should be doing, is they should be remaking they're, Atlantis and Treasure They're Planet. lesser popular movies. Yes. Yes. The ones that Atlantis would fit perfectly in live action. Treasure yes. Planet would be would, amazing. Yeah, like... Yeah, they Spielberg really to it. direct not, it. Yeah. Not yeah. Lilo and Stitch. Not shit Here, like this. Spielberg directing Treasure Planet. Yeah. No. Even, that yeah. fucking worked really um, well. Even um, uh, Peter Jackson would would do something really cool with. Yeah, this. he would. Um, even at, who? I think. Um, I mean, a lot of directors would be good with Atlantis. Uh, uh, um, Peter, I think Peter Jackson will be better with Atlantis than Spielberg with Treasure Planet. Yeah. 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 I I think I. I think I have another one that I'd prefer for um, for uh, Treasure Planet. John Watts. Yeah. Okay. Eh. That yeah, that was cool. He. Uh, th- I don't want him to be. Uh, 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 um, like he 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 fills a kind of role. I I don't know what the equivalent of a typecast for a director is. Um, well, he's um he's but, direct- He has a movie that's coming out pretty soon on yeah. Apple TV with George Clooney Wolves. Um, he, okay. he's, he directed a pretty cool movie called Cop Car with Kevin Bacon. And, okay. I want to see that. Um, he, uh, this is a movie that I watched before Spider-Man Homecoming, and I didn't even realize it was him directing uh, the, the movie Clown. The not, not it, of course, but it's the one that's just called Clown with the guy who puts on the clown costume, and it, he becomes like a clown monster. I think I Did know what you you're talking that? about. I think I know what you're talking about. I've it, at least seen he, clips he of it on TikTok. That, he directed that. It's, Shit, really? He, it's a pretty good movie. Um, I didn't know that. That's right, really Dylan. Um, huh? That's right up your alley. He, Fuck off. Eli Roth <laughs> produced it, too. It definitely feels like an Eli Roth production. But, huh. Yeah. yeah I, Treasure, I had no idea about that. I like Treasure Planet. It yeah, probably yeah, feels really more like an EOI Roth movie than yeah. His, yeah. his own directed yeah. movie does with yeah. Borderlands. But yeah, but but then yeah. but but then when We Were Stitch came out, that's when the, uh, the movie actually did well. So they wanted to try yeah. to do something different. They've been trying to get this film for years to, to, to make, was, was Treasure Planet. Yeah. And, uh, and unfortunately, when the film came out, the movie flopped. And it lost over $70 million for this movie. And I can kind of understand why, because trying to do something different, and also computer animation was blowing yeah, up. Hand drawn, yeah, hand-drawn was on its way out. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, but honestly... The whole movie Treasure Planet, uh, I, I found the movie very exciting. I love the animation. I thought the characters were very fun. I love yeah. the robot. The robot the is band. great. Yeah. And and also the villain, you have a soft spot for the villain. Like 
Yeah. And like many, he, he, many, is, he is dislikable, but he's also lovable at the same time. You, yeah, you many, root for this guy. In many, po- in many areas of the film, you, he doesn't even feel like a, a real villain. He just kind no, of feels yeah. like a, uh, Which makes him more great. like an anti-hero. In a yeah. Victim of circumstance. Yeah. Kind of. yeah. yeah. But uh, Treasure Planet for me, a, extremely underrated. Absolutely love the movie. It's uh, I personally think it's absolutely fantastic. All right, number seven. Um, uh, you have it at number one on the list, the Minority Report. Uh, this is definitely one of Spielberg, Spielberg's most underrated films. Absolutely love it. Uh, definitely fantastic. Yeah, it's not so much that it's underrated because most people I know love this movie, but whatever, yeah. like, best Spielberg movies are mentioned, like, Minority Report, it's, like, never on the list. For, yeah, it's a movie that's not mentioned enough. Yeah. Yeah, which it should. In it general, yeah. There, there's a lot of lesser-known Spielberg movies that I think are, like top five material for yeah. him, yeah, like yeah. Uh, Munich. If yeah, you but that's a movie that I definitely. Uh, that's a movie I definitely need to rewatch more and more times because I, I I do remember loving. I that need film. to rewatch Close Encounters. I've only seen it once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, Minority. He has so many Encounters. amazing films though. It's yeah. <laughs> like good God. <laughs> yeah. He has some stinkers in there, but like rarely ever does Spielberg like truly miss. You know. Yeah. No. Agreed. But uh, but I absolutely love Minority. He's got it. multiple decades of good decades of good science fiction films because he's got Ready Player One and yeah. I, I really like Ready Player One. I, I do don't too. Care what anyone says. Yeah. I should have Sci Fi too. Yeah. Ooh. Of course. Yeah. It's futuristic. It's Dang. got all that. Stuff. I, yeah. Man, I mean, I may need to re- re- watch that movie too. <sighs> it, it, it's uh, 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 the techno uh, the technology aside, the environment alone makes it a sci fi movie. Because it's, it's the same it takes place in the future. A, a, yeah, it's kind of a post-apocalyptic. Yeah, uh, kind almost of. Almost any movie that takes place in a, in a future is. Usually yeah, generally, yeah. yeah. A- anything more than like five years out is probably considered sci-fi. Yeah. Civil yeah, War is t- the movie Civil War that came out this year is technically mm. sci-fi. It well, is, yeah, so. yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, minor Report, absolutely love it. So that comes in number seven. That film actually received great reviews by critics. Number six on the list was. <laughs> Not very well received. It was very mixed, but it's on the list anyway, and I will defend this movie with a passion. It is actually my top two favorite disaster movies, The Day After Tomorrow. Now, oh, shit. You can change that's it. not on my list. <laughs> you can change your list if you want to. You can go ahead and put it on there if you wanted to. So, anyway, now, guys, listen. I know that not a lot of people love this movie. I know I know that. But this actually got me into, into disaster movies, and mm. I remember... Watch it for the first time and absolutely loving it. Uh, I yeah. I found the movie it's to so be... many kinds of disaster movies in one movie. That's yeah, it's got yeah. literally. Yeah. <laughs> but I found this. It's got tornadoes. It's got hurricanes. It's got ice storms. It's got everything in there. Yeah, but I found this movie to be so much fun, so exciting. Uh, seeing all the weather changes all in one movie, yeah. I find it to be so cool. Jake Gyllenhaal is great. Uh, Dennis the, Quaid. The, uh, the love interest between Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal and another actress. Who was, who was that actress? I can't Tom remember. Spacing. I can't it's remember. Time. It was. It's got to be someone that's. Well I got to look it up for myself too. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look that up. You can. You okay, know. but yeah, I I love the day after tomorrow and the special effects. Do I love the special effects? Yeah, it's uh, cool. it looks amazing. That's um, a movie I need to rewatch too. Yeah. It's been a minute. And also. Oh, I, Emmy Rossum. Um, oh, oh yeah, 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 Shameless and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And also, I know people hate Rowan Emmerich. I, I kind of love Rowan um, Emmerich. Yeah, I kind of, I, I kind of love the guy. I personally think he's one of the more underappreciated directors, at least for me. Um, Aside from Independence Day, The Patriot, and um, Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, <laughs> those might be the only two films I would consider good. Everything else, is well, just like, honestly, 2012. Yeah. I, I like, I, I like 2012. 2012 is, in my, not a good film. <laughs> it's it's like not it. a good film. Way too goddamn long. It did not need to be three yeah, hours. I, will admit, the I don't think I've seen it long. since 2013. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's not a good film. The standout is the effects. That's Easily, literally. That, I mean, that's every one of yeah, his movies. The effects say. might be good, but the story and characters yeah. are just dreadful. Yeah, honestly, this is this is my version of Zack Snyder. Like, people will uh, people love Zack Snyder, but I prefer Emmerich's direction more than uh, Snyder's. I am at confused. least for me, anyway. I don't see these two. I know in it's any crazy, way but yeah, I don't see the comparison. I I don't, I, I don't know. I, like, <laughs> I am very confused. Is it, is it just like you? Is it just because they d- have like 
distinct styles? Or? Yeah, like, yeah. Why, yeah. why the comparison to Zack Snyder specifically? Their, their styles are so <laughs> I, different. Because I, I heard a lot of people, like, they still love Zack Snyder for his directing, but his only setback is director's cuts. Rowan Emmerich, they only hate him because of disaster movies, which I want more disaster not, movies. So. He's usually not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I, <laughs> other than... Yeah, it seems like don't, other than the Patriot. Don't rub your eyes. You have not seen Wally. You don't get a pass, man. No, no, he no. If you see this fucking movie, he fucking gets it. I've I, seen all of Roland Emmerich's like big movies. Uh, Wally has nothing to do with this, John. I, <laughs> what? To, the reason why I'm so mad, I'm still so against Roland Emmerich is because it might solely because be because of Independence Day resurgence. Fuck that goddamn movie. <laughs> Still haven't seen it. Piece of crap. I, it was I, so I goddamn awful. I don't hate it. I thought it was okay. Yeah, how much you want to bet that I'm going to watch that? One of the worst films I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. I'm, I think I'm going to watch for it me, in the next me, week and me, be like, and the fucking movie, love it. The movie is, m- is much more watchable than most of the other uh, sequels that were unnecessary. I, okay. It might be. been it might be, it's, I thought it was it's okay. The, it this, might this be the worst. like the one that sounds like the least necessary biggest is, biggest issue will opinion. smith is not in it that's, that's a, not yeah that's that that not remotely issue. the worst part of it that, i'm that, telling that you that right a, now no will smith had, me. Go, dumb himself a favor not being in that no he he went I, and I said have... to be in suicide squad i don't consider that a favor <laughs> <laughs> i like suicide squad too. too yeah i was gonna say those those two are boy, pro boy, a or boy, suicide right, squad fun topic are we <laughs> anyway uh i love i love the day of tomorrow i found the whole film great i love the whole it's really good it's really good it's super Super underappreciated. Yeah, it, I'll, yeah, I'll say that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that comes in at number six. Uh, speaking of underappreciation, number five on the list is the movie that I watched, and this actually was the very first Boo Sky animated film I saw in theaters. Robots. Oh yeah, Robots. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, this is for me one of the most underappreciated animated movies on this list because, mm. first off, I love the whole movie. I still think the an- animation ages very well. Yeah, Robin Williams is great in this movie. Yeah, he is so yeah. fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the characters. I Look thought the I thought I thought the comedy was great. Isn't Greg Kinnear the villain? Uh, he voices the villain. I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, I liked him. Um, I liked yeah. him. He, he is great. Since you brought that up, we're doing an episode before the end of the year. Top five Robin Williams performances. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm Robots alone. will not be on that list. It, no, <laughs> it will be on mine. <laughs> that man has so many goddamn great performances. Yeah, it's yes. like, true, it's true. It, 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 I, for me, it has to be at least, at least, and I feel like maybe at most, one okay. is going I, to be I, animated. I, I, Everything I, I, else is going to be him live in, action. Actually, no. Okay, I, I want to spoil what's going to be on my Robin Williams movies list, no. but but I better Let's not. not. Uh, because I already know what's going to be on my list. I already know. Um but yeah, I love robots. Uh, very underrated and unappreciated. I I absolutely um, love this whole movie. Yeah, it was one of the ones that got memed about really hard, and it's like you don't really? see you don't That's see weird. a lot of other. I don't remember that. Well, no, it, it, it's it's kind of the same inf- uh, infatuation with it that there was with Shrek, that there was with the B movie. It, it was like uh, memed about kind of like that. <laughs> I am um, actually, Aunt Fanny I don't was beloved any by many. <laughs> memes. Oh, good. I am actually right. shocked at this. Only half my list has even been mentioned. I've yeah, still got uh, five that's crazy. movies on my list that haven't even been That's mentioned. crazy. Yeah, aside from the fact that I changed my number 10 to uh, to Day After Tomorrow because I wasn't a big fan of my number 10 uh, where it was. Uh, it didn't fit too well. So I, make, I made him change his mind. That's yeah, right. no, you you made me change my mind about number 10. But uh, aside Thank from you. that, only like one or two of my movies has been mentioned. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, I but yeah, Robots is absolutely very fun. Uh, Corporate Field is at number four. I believe he had it at number five, uh, five on your yeah. list. So I liked it just a little bit more. I love uh, Cloverfield. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Uh, <laughs> I consider there's another disaster movie. Also, it is. yeah, yeah, which I also really love. But the monster makes it a sci-fi movie. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So I really enjoy Cloverfield. Um, um, it, it, it's a great movie. Uh, I need to rewatch it more often. It's really great. Uh, I believe J.J. Abrams directed this movie. No, Matt oh. Reeves directed it. Oh, Matt yeah. Reeves. J.J. Oh, Abrams oh, I'm sorry. Produ- J. J. Abrams produced yeah. it. Sir and Matt Reeves, yeah. Uh, Ten Cloverfield Lane's good, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's Very, that's very different, film. of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. different. Uh, that's do, more of a straight-up horror do movie. Do not recommend Cloverfield Paradox. No. Yeah, I was about to ask that about that. Yeah. Sucks. That sucks. It's horrible. Uh, is, it's uh, terrible. Is I heard give that a good Netflix, they did this weird strategy. They dumped it. They showed the trailer for it, the Super Bowl, and yeah. then they said the movie comes out tonight at midnight after the game. I, <laughs> yeah, I stayed I up. That. I stayed up. Folks. I stayed up to watch it. One of the w- 
biggest mistakes of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Does... Does Daniel Brühl at least give a good performance? I mean, the acting is not bad, but it's so stupid, and it makes <laughs> okay, no sense. Okay. It does not fit into the other movies at and all. The, oh, the, okay. It doesn't follow its own rules. It has no rules, basically. It just huh. does whatever Whoops. the fuck it wants. So, so you'd say that it's a paradox. <laughs> it's just it's a bad movie, is what it's called. <laughs> Should I, I throw that in the bank? We may have to do a quote, and we may have to do a quote reveal <laughs> ranking. Someday. That there's would, only that three of them. Yeah, there's only three. And well, still, that would be same it, order. Well, still, it would be One, fun. Two, to, it, it would be fun to do. Ooh, baby, I just hit fifty. <laughs> Continue, John. Okay. Over Overlord is a better Cloverfield movie than <laughs> no, because it's by a Bad Robot, and I need to see that. Even though it had nothing to do with Overlord Cloverfield, it is good in my opinion. Yeah. Over, Maybe Overlord, not a great film. But wait, right. what, let's what move on to number Overlord. three. Overlord's great. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I like I, I liked Overlord. All right, let's uh, get to number three on my list. Um, for the third time in these top ten, another Star Trek movie is on the list. Yeah, yeah it seems like I actually like this franchise. Star Trek Nemesis? Wow. I, <laughs> no, 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 no. That film need to, that batteries need to be changed with that movie, which I still love Roger Ebert's Did it meet its nemesis? Uh, God. Shush. <laughs> no. J.J. Abrams. Yeah. Star oh, yeah, Trek. J.J. Abrams was its nemesis. If, if, I, if I just got one in the bank for that, you definitely do, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yes, uh, J.J. Abrams, uh, yeah, he pretty much saved the franchise <laughs> when, when he directed this movie in 2009. Um, I still absolutely love it, and uh, oh, I'm not going to go into full details. Like I said, guys, if you want to check out for yourself, go check out the Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. made it. About. Abrams made it much more mainstream than it ever had been. Absolutely. Yes. He really Agreed. made it into a blockbuster. Yeah. yeah. For some reason, I uh, there's at least one YouTuber that says he was doing a pics of Great movies by worst directors. He mentioned J.J. Abrams. I okay. Like, I was like, huh? J.J. Abrams is J a great director. Okay, first of all, J.J. Abrams, like aside from Star Trek, of course, and Star Wars, I don't think he's directed enough movies to like fully judge him as no, that. No. Like, Mission Impossible 3. Mission either. Impossible 3, uh, Super 8, which I yeah, love. Super 8. Um, Super 8. Great. I, re I really, I almost put the Star, Star Trek 09 on this list. Wasn't really big on Into Darkness. Um, really like Force Awakens. Didn't like uh, Rise of Skywalker. It was like, I can't really say he's a bad director because I just no. don't think he's directed enough. Um, I mean, he's directed mainly just like huge IP films. Yeah, and I, yeah. Honestly, you can't really judge a director when he pretty yeah, much I directs could be wrong. only I those. think it was a YouTuber that I love that actually said that. And if there are other people that hate J.J. Abrams, first of all, why do you hate the guy? Like, what happened with what's Rise, wrong with what it? happened with Rise of Skywalker was not his fault. No, be, no, no. Even honest. though it's actually my fifth favorite Star Wars movie, and I actually oh appreciate, I, I do, I appreciate this movie more when I watched it the second time. Yeah, no, no. I, I'm uh, Rise of Skywalker is good. In my yeah, opinion. absolutely. Uh, yeah. But Star Trek, I, I do think is absolutely, uh, definitely is, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, number two uh, is the Prestige. Uh, we talked about this before, but I definitely got a little things uh, more to say. Yeah, this is a movie that it. I loved more when I watched this film the second time. Now, I remember watching it the first time, and I remember thinking that I loved it, but when there's a new Christopher Nolan movie that came out, which was Oppenheimer, I decided, you know what, I'm never going to rewatch The Prestige. Then I watched it the second time, and my gosh, did it blew me away when I watched yeah. the film the second time. The thing with Nolan's time. films, they're so rewatchable, almost yeah. every yeah. one Agreed. of them. Yeah. Like, there's so much going on that you pick up on... Something new each time you watch yeah. it. I still need to rewatch Oppenheimer. I've only watched mm -hmm. it once. Yeah, I, uh, I, I need the to only amount of times I plan on watching it. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. And 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 I can say, and all I can say, uh, the plot twist. Wow, like when I watched the plot twist of the uh, of the Prestige, when I watched the second time, it blew me away. <laughs> like that plot twist was just genius. Yes, that was agreed. so good. Like. I, for some reason, I guess I didn't catch it the first time for some reason. Then when I watched it, I catched it. And now I want to rewatch it more and more times because you're going to keep saying the plot twist is genius. Like, it's like, wow, it's perfect. Um, and for some reason, people are going to say it's one of uh, uh, no one's worst films. Yeah, like, I don't what? Uh, excuse what? Me? what? Yeah, like, I, what? I, I don't that's understand so that That's so crazy. Like, for anyone that says it's no one's worst films, that's, that is what? nuts. That's nuts. I've never heard anybody say that. No, neither have I. I've seen a few people say it. Yeah. Um, I but, mean, uh, 
I don't well, listen even, to well, even, pe- even worse Christopher Nolan film is like at least like a seven out of ten. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh but the prestige absolutely is great. Um but I think yeah, I did one number one my on my list is. Uh and that is Wally. Uh of course mm-hmm. Wally's number one. Um yeah, I, I was so excited to rewatch it before I did my rankings and I I, I Honestly, there are like multiple Pixar movies. Like, if the Toy Story movies did not come out, like I would put like maybe Wally like high up high of every any Pixar movie. Yeah, Wally. Yeah, up. yeah but yeah. Wally Ratatouille. It, it, yeah, and Ratatouille. <laughs> yeah, but this movie is masterpiece. Like, I will be honest with you, I didn't watch it until I was an adult because at first I would just think to myself. But the film is sort of silent. Why well, don't I want to watch a silent movie? It's even better movie. watching it as a, an adult. Yeah, th- true. Than watching yeah. it as a kid. Yeah, I mean, I remember. I be mean, I almost skipped this one because I thought to myself, "Why well, don't I want to watch a movie that actually is all silence?" Then I watched it. Well, it's thre- not all silent. Uh, yeah, then I watched it, it three, four times, and I thought to myself, "Man, this film is beautiful. Like, it's so good." That is one thing you can give to Pixar. They make movies directed at kids, but they are appreciated by all ages. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. Agreed. Absolutely. Um, up, uh, well, Pixar, what makes them so great is um, their visual storytelling, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, look at the opening scene of Up. Like, you can't even name one other silent opening scene in a movie that can immediately make you cry like that. Yes. You can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I love the relationship between Wally and Eve. It's so good. It's just wonderful chemistry uh, between these two. It also is, surprise, surprise, really funny. Mm. Uh, it's got some really great funny moments. Uh, the human character, he's great uh, in the film. Um, just a bunch I'm, of I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little disappointed it did not get Best Picture nomination. Because when you look at, when people talk about what's the greatest 2000s movie, I believe Wally was mentioned at number one, and yet it did not get a Best Picture nomination. A lot of 2008 That's movies. That's so weird. A like, lot of 2008 movies that should have got Best Picture nominations yeah. didn't. Yeah. I mean, for Dark crying Knight. out loud, Oscars! Animation is film. It's an art. Well, the year yeah, but the um, Academy. They don't a couple care. years <laughs> later, they did. When did Up come out? Did 2009. Get, yeah. Well, that got Best Picture nomination. Yep. And so. Toy Story three that got Best Picture nomination, but only three animated films got nominated for Best Picture. And Wally should have been one of them. It's weird. It should have, yeah. Um, as you can tell, that's how much I love this movie. So, <laughs> Wally is at, at number one on my list. Well, yeah. I guess you're next, huh? I still have five movies that haven't been mentioned. Uh, Damn. That's, that's, uh, aside from the one or two that got knocked off my list, mine, I, I think I know which movie you'll going. mention, and I think, I'm all, I think I might be able to make a comment on it. So, we'll see. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, so, uh, number ten. It was originally uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I like. I just. I think that's a really fun movie. I like it. Uh, I've. I've watched it multiple times uh, throughout the years. Um, it's just a really fun movie. Oh, uh, I, I changed it to the day after tomorrow. But oh shit! Oh what? guys, I. For- I forgot. I wanted to put. Now that I'm thinking about it, m- there's one movie. I I'm gonna say is an honorable mention here. Idiocracy. Yeah. When you yeah. bring up this movie. It honestly does make sense because yeah. Idiocracy is one of the funniest movies and funniest sci-fi films uh, of this decade, easily. It's have, a... you, idi- have you guys seen Idiocracy? No. I haven't, but uh, I actually it's was going to watch it last night. It's, it's uh, so free on brilliant. YouTube. Yeah. It's awesome. I, 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 it's Luke Wilson, it's, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> by the guy who did, uh, it's by Mike Hill who did uh, Office Space and uh, oh, okay. uh, Beavis and Butthead. Oh. It's, yeah. it's clap for it. It, it <laughs> made. It, it, not know it's that. One, it made no money at the box office when it came out, yeah. and it instantly became like a cult hit when it hit video. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's absolutely watch it. It's it's becoming true. The more okay. and more we live in today's society. It's okay, I, I'm gonna have to check it out then. That, yeah. that sounds really interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I need to figure that out. Yeah, honorable mention for Idiocracy that I so badly wanted to put on here, but it didn't end up. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, that we are talking about day after tomorrow. Uh, since Hitchhikers isn't my number ten anymore, I'll I'll, I'll move to number nine. Number nine, uh, Titan A. 
Yeah. yeah. Really Ooh. fucking good in my opinion. <laughs> this is I one of Don it. Bluth's last film. Yeah, right? it was. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it was underappreciated back then. Yes, it's still <laughs> underappreciated. I see like nobody fucking talk about it. I, I, I see like one post maybe once a year. Maybe. I recently got the it. DVD. I have not watched it yet. It's so fucking good. And it's, it's not bad. I, 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 I like the animation, Bluth, obviously, I'm, with, because of Bluth. When it comes but. to Don Bluth, I, this is not one of his better films, in my opinion. No. Um, no. It's not like Land Before Time or uh, American Tale level or hmm. um, Secret of Nim. But, uh, I mean, it's it it was a weird period because it seemed like he was be- trying to become more and more like Disney. Yeah. In, with a few more adult themes, like with Anastasia, which I think is yes. better than this mm. film. But, yeah. Just personal thoughts. Yeah, no, no, no. That's completely valid. I, I, I totally see where you're coming at with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just this movie, it, it is one where like I grew up with it. Like, uh, it, it's this was honestly one of the. Um, I had this on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> if I wore a tape out on VHS, it was this. <laughs> it, it's an interesting oh. blend of CG and it, it, hand drawn. Yeah, too. It, it is. The, uh, I. I what are those blue creatures called? Like the aliens? I forget what they're. I'm called. spacing on it. Yeah, I, the, I, I, I haven't watched. I like it how this those, I like how they're designed. Yes, um, the, uh, the, 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 the designs in this, in my opinion, are super great for any and animated sci-fi. Also, a weirdly outstanding cast too. Yeah, Matt yeah. Da- Matt Damon and Drew Barrymore. Yeah, like, holy <laughs> shit. Um, I, I wore out the witch's ghost Scooby Doo when I was little. Yeah, Scooby yeah. That that ghost. was. Uh, yeah. I, I think I wore out a uh, reluctant werewolf. <laughs> I wore out. I think that was my I go-to. wore out alien invaders. So. <sighs> They're all so fucking good. Hex girls and of yeah. course, um, <laughs> Zombie Island. Yes, yeah. yes. I do. I do really <laughs> want to do that episode for. I want to drop on Halloween. Like, like the let's Scooby do Doo mo- like VHS uh, or top video. ten animated Scooby Doo movies. Mm. Yeah, let's do it. I'm I'm all for that. <laughs> the, yeah. I got. I'm gonna put the kiss one on there. You know. Yes, <laughs> I've got like 25 of them Jesus on DVD. Because they had eight packs of Walmart for a yeah, while. I, like I don't. I don't for, think like, I'll have the time to watch all, <laughs> watch a Scooby Two. Yeah, it'll take a minute. Do the ones you've seen at least, like all your favorites of the ones you've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to rewatch all of them. I'm gonna rewatch all. Of them. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> mm. No. Um, what else no. we got? I'm uh, a head yeah. Tiny uh, A, really good, super underappreciated. Yeah. Uh, I those noodles. Oh. Um, I don't remember the noodles. Th- well, they were like flying through space, and he was super pissed off because he wanted to eat. It's it's a it's a full thing. It's like mm. one of those silly moments I can't get out of my head. Mm. Um, uh, uh, number A is Gamer with Gerard Butler. Oh um, man, I forgot about this one. Yeah, it's a lot of people. I I feel like it's. I feel like it's one of the, uh, one of those ones that not a lot of people talk about it, but part of that's because not a whole lot of people like the writing in it, which I, I get is, to a certain this degree. Is directed by the guys uh, Neville Dean and Taylor, who did uh, the Crank movies. And yeah, would Makes later sense, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like it, later it, it fits do, in that realm. Yeah. Would later do fucking Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally see. I didn't know that. But I totally fucking and they see never, it compared they to never, to it. After that, they never did another movie again. It fits in the spirit. Damn, dude. I'm not adding that. Spirit of Venge- I think Spirit of Vengeance is awful. <laughs> it's. I agree. <laughs> I agree. It, but you cr- cannot fucking tell me that him powering up all that heavy equipment in that industrial zone. That was cool. And converting it isn't fucking cool. <laughs> you can't tell me. The movie is it's still badass. shit. badass. <laughs> him, him pissing flames? Dude. <laughs> like. Man. It's 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 a crazy movie, and you I love it for that. You would do that if you could. Now, yes! Yes, I one would! Thing I, one thing I'll <laughs> say about those the guys who directed this, Neville Dean and Taylor, not good storytellers, but they are <laughs> uh, c- they are devoted to like good stunt work and good yes, like, action agreed. pieces, even in Ghost Rider 2. I think well, they, John they, should watch great the Crank movies. They're great concepts, too. Mm. I think John should watch the Crank movies. Yes, agreed. Yeah, those are those are a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, they are a lot of fun. At least the first one, John. You had to watch. I, at least I the first like one. Crank too. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, uh, high vo- I like High Voltage. <laughs> it's great. I mean, I am the. I mean, the. I am the action they're car- movie expert. They are so cartoonish, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't I am tell the them action movie expert. No, no, God, no. <laughs> and it's not going to be like, oh, it's the best, greatest action they're movie Jason ever. Statham. But you know, they're, I'll probably enjoy it. They're cheesy yeah. Jason Statham action movies. Yes, they're essentially Jason Statham B movies. Yes, they are. They are. They're, fun. they're really fun. <laughs> no, I, I just ga- uh, 
Gamer, it, it's another one of those like futuristic. Like it's weird that we could get, be getting to that kind of point because uh, I feel like it's um, it's like the Running Man. Yes, is it, is it it's like, a lot like the Running Man. Is virtual reality a part of this? Yeah, or? it is part of it okay. uh, uh, because the entire like concept of the game it, or the uh, of the movie is that there's this video game, a lot like uh, Call of Duty, where yeah. it, it is VR, uh, where people uh, uh, people can hook up at home and they can basically select. Uh, they can select lives of these different people in the world where these people like the, either they opted for the program or they're uh, institutionalized. Hmm. So like, uh, for example, Gerard Butler plays, uh, plays this man who was found guilty of uh, murder. I believe I, I think he, yeah, I, I, th- I think he was found guilty of murdering somebody. He was framed for it, mm. but yeah. um, uh, he got institutionalized, and because he got institutionalized, he was picked up. Uh, he was adopted by this uh, video game, where people are able to play this Call of Duty like video game, and the players are, or uh, and the characters are these actual life people. I just like that phrase, adopted by a video game. Thing. Yeah, yeah, no, it's weird. <laughs> I, yeah, I like that term. <laughs> it's the best way to put it. In my opinion. Uh, it's very relevant now. Yeah, of yeah, course, yeah. But... The, uh, uh, ba- basically, like they're they're picked up by these video games. And uh, these people at home can live out their wildest fantasies with them. So, like, uh, uh, um, like it's all like Death Row inmates and stuff. Yes, yeah. yeah. It, yeah it, death, it's not even just Death Row inmates. Lot, people sounds like sounds a lot like Running Man. Yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, it, it, that's Which the best the comparison, in my opinion. Well, um, I I would like to see a remake of that. Truly, yeah, I believe it's coming next year. Actually, I, really? Yeah. Holy shit! Isn't Glenn Powell? Starring in it? Is he? I think yes. he is. I think I heard something oh like that. Oh my god. Dude, hold on, hold on, yeah, hold on. look that shit up. Hold on. Who's going to direct it? I don't know. Yeah, look um, that shit up, too. <laughs> uh, um, I'm hoping it's a good director. Yeah. Anything besides uh, that, I'm mean, like, Because eh. The Running Man, the 80s one, I don't consider a classic in any way. I mean, mm. even with Arnold being fun in it. Uh, a remake could very much help it out. Yeah, agreed. Does that have a director? Uh, yes, it does. I'm looking. Glenn Powell is confirmed. Yep. Sick. Freaking Edgar Wright. <gasps> what? Oh, I forgot. Oh, Edgar Wright. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I need to oh watch my the. God. I need to watch the original. And you now you now I'm kind of excited. For when it. you get Edgar Wright, you're he's, not playing around. He's one around. of the greats, dude. He's my favorite fucking filmmaker. Nice. Yeah, he's I one of mine too. He's it's amazing. in pre-production right now. Oh, dude, I'm so happy. I swear to God, if Edgar Wright pulls an Ant-Man on this, I'm going to be so pissed. Like, if he drops out, oh, my God. Dude, I really fucking hope that it's him. Oh, Uh, oh, that's right. He was going to direct Ant-Man. He was going to do Ant-Man. He was going to do Flash. Like, he was attached with all these major fucking things. And then... Hopefully, yeah, it, hopefully no serious creative differences happen again. That's I hope all I'm not. Say. Edgar Wright could absolutely fucking well, nail it. He will this. do great. Yeah. But yes. we'll talk about that another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, anyway, if, yeah. This, if this happens, I'm so hyped. Uh, I'm so <laughs> I hyped. cannot fucking wait. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, uh, ga- gamer, no, gamer's really good. I, I fully recommend it. It's got Gerard Butler, Logan Lerman, Michael C. Uh, Michael C. Hall. Oh. Um, I can't remember who plays Gerard Butler's wife in it. But she's also a huge name. Uh, I, I, it's you can't a go really wrong fucking with good Butler. movie. Yeah, I, I love it. it it's just amazing. Like even, a lot of more even when it seems, even when oh, he, it's got a uh, Terry Crews in it too. Oh, uh, even he plays when, a minor role. Uh, I love Terry Crews. He's I one of those guys him. where uh, he's one of my favorite. America's Got Talent host. I yeah, he, love. He him. is really good. Oh, yeah, I'll give is him. Is it Kira yeah. Sedgwick? Kevin Bacon's wife is uh, the. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, Allison Lohman's in this too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it's got a lot of pretty good names in it. I, I honestly, the the fact that I don't see it mentioned a whole lot now, other than like seeing it in a meme, is kind of wild. Yeah, Gerard Butler's is one of the most reliable stars right now because yes. even yeah. when he can like sleepwalk through a, a role because he's done a lot of those kinds of action yeah. movies, he weirdly doesn't like usually. He, like, yeah, he, he still brings it. He, br- it. Yeah. he, he does. He does oddly put a lot of effort into it, even when he doesn't have to. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Even um, if the rest of the movie sucks, he's still the standout. Yeah, and um, yeah, th- I think that's why we're getting a Den of Thieves two, which yeah. the trailer Ooh, just came out for. Okay, that, so. Den of Thieves two, Pantera. I, I haven't seen Pan- any trailer. When, if you I'm name it after a, a badass band, I'm gonna see it. <laughs> Uh, gonna walk oh yeah, boy. he directed Shaun the Dead, <laughs> Hot Fuzz, Got yeah. Yeah. the World. 
Man, I need to. I man, there's lots of movies I definitely need to check out. Yeah, for sure. you need to check out last his Night's, entire film. Last Night in Soho really was good. very underappreciated. Yes, agreed. But that's now available on uh, free V to watch with ads. So I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, it's, I know you said it, uh, it's very different. Don't expect a straightforward horror film yeah, uh, with Last Night in Soho. But Last Night in Soho is actually what got me to stop. Uh, Garrett, I don't know if you were watching or listening to our stuff from last year. No, but I was giving like every single new movie I was watching a ten. Up until I watched so- Last Night in Soho for the first time last year. After I, wa- uh, after I watched Last Night in Soho for the first time last year, I, I looked back at my scores. I was like, fuck that. <laughs> I was like, these do not deserve fucking tens. Because Last Night in Soho, it, it, it's like the perfect blend for um, like what Edgar Wright does so well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just like uh, my general takeaway on first watches of a movie for me. It, it just, it was, it, 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 it delivered and it blended that kind of area for me so fucking well it, w- it was my first like this absolutely de- deserves the 10 based on his technical qualifications along with my personal enjoyment a lot of people it fucking deserves when it. they saw it judged it strictly as a straightforward horror film, yeah yeah it's yeah it's not it's yeah. not at all it's very much you can it's very much if edgar wright tried to tell a ghost story yeah and, it's a little more thriller in, but than horror. in yeah. my opinion i think it it works very well as like its own unique thing yes so. agreed uh, I, I I love which it. Ed, Last Ed, night, so if, it was... <laughs> which Ed Wright should always do. And yeah, yeah. He, he's just a good an reason. amazing filmmaker. Yeah. yeah. What else you got? Yeah, I said let's get the, let's get back to the list. Uh, yeah, so yeah. That's number eight. What's up at number seven? Uh, number seven is Jumper, starring Hayden Christensen. <laughs> oh my! Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's solely. I never on my, saw this. I don't my, know what I the fuck people Jumper. are saying about it. I I don't think I've ever looked up reviews or anything. It's just like solely my personal enjoyment of this movie. And the fact that I personally think that it's very underappreciated. It's uh, kind of like a teleporting X Men movie. It is. Mm. It, it's. Um. I. I feel like it delivers on a lot. Of, a, a lot of things really well. I think that's written really well in my. Uh, Did, I from think my Doug memory. Lyman, Doug Lyman, I think, directed this. I. I, I can't I'm, remember. I believe that's so, yeah. not I think right. So, yeah. Uh. But it, it's. It's. It's one of my favorite displays of teleportation yeah. powers. This in, is directed in by Doug Lyman. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, I like, God, how, how can I quantify it? I, I'm not good at putting things into words. Well, <laughs> um, it, that's honestly one of my biggest flaws. I can't work today. Yeah, I can't. I, I just, I love this. Like my brain is like firing on full pistons right now. Just thinking about jumper. Wait, is Chris I, Stewart a, in this? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't remember, uh, what her, older version is but like uh uh hayden christensen's uh young uh, younger version is max thy uh thy riot uh theory uh, i i can't remember but he max. was in the pacifier he was in um, pacifier yeah, the first call yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> he was in uh the the pacifier he was in base motel he played the hmm. the older brother um okay uh, he he's in Fire Country right now, I, I believe. If uh, I can't remember the title of the show, I think that's right. But it's a Paramount show. Yeah. Um, no, uh, it, it's got Samuel Jackson in it too. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm not. I, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, very recently, so I can't remember 100. percent But I'm pretty sure like Samuel Jackson plays a hunter who hunts down porters. And it's also got uh, uh, Jamie Griffin in it. Who Jamie Griffin was in? Um, fuck. He was in uh, uh, Man on the Ledge with Sam Worthington. He played the uh, accomplice brother. I didn't see or that. Or not the accomplice brother. Uh, the, Sam Worthington was the accomplice. But uh, uh, he, he was in that. He was in... Um, shit. I, I can't remember. Um, uh, regardless. Uh, Jumper's just a really good movie. I think that it's a great uh, uh, kind of th- uh, action thriller. Uh, it's... It goes about... It, it's... It goes about powers in the same kind of way that push does. Yeah. Does that make Honestly, sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The push and jumper seem like they can go hand in hand. Yeah. It, it, that that's what it is. It, it, it it's another kind of one of those movies. And I didn't want to put on uh um like uh, movies with superpowers. We kind of established that the first episode. Well, not ones that like are s- solely like strictly based on uh, yeah 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 IP. Uh, I I felt I, I felt like push was uh, because if it wasn't going to be jump on uh, uh, jump around my list, it was going to be push. I, I love both movies a lot. Yeah, since we weren't doing IP, that's why Man Thing wasn't on my list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I I just feel they they do superpowers in the same kind of way where it's a little more outlawed, a little more taboo. Um, 
Uh, sorry, I'm trying to like keep my brain on track for this fucking movie. <laughs> There's a lot of thoughts for Jumper. I've never been able to talk about Jumper before in my life. <laughs> I haven't heard anyone say anything about Jumper. Yeah, in, like, no, uh, exactly. Years. Like, I feel like there's like f- uh, fans few and far, uh, few I've and far in between. In years. I, I I feel like a lot of the people that talk about Jumper today are either people that are Hayden Christensen fans or people that are Star Wars fans, and even then, it's because they like Hayden Christensen. To, to I me, feel like that's what it is. To me, it kind of has the feeling of like a like a young adult YA type of movie. Yeah, a, a little bit. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, I could see that. Uh, yeah. And I'm not big on those types of movies anyway. So I, I'll say it has a good ending. It, it, it leaves it a, li- a bit more open ended, uh, which, which I appreciate. Um, but the climax of it, I I just I really appreciate. I, I I like the callbacks. I like um, how, like, the entire thing is, like, this guy thought that he had his entire fucking life figured out. And then he's just blindsided by this girl that he had the hots for that triggered his powers. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it it's... Uh, I'm sorry. I, I just... I keep thinking of the climax scene where uh, the, his, one of his final jumps. And it's just really... It's done really well, in my opinion. I think the cinematography is really good. I, I think that the writing is pretty fucking solid here. Uh, I, I think that is directed well. Uh, I just, it's a really good movie. In my Doug Liman usually does a great job. Yeah, yeah. And he, he, this was no exception. Uh, I, I love Jumper. It's a great fucking movie. Everybody needs to fucking see Jumper. Everybody needs to be talking about Jumper. <laughs> 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 but um, uh, Number six. I'm going to be fucking honest, Garrett. I thought this was going to be the one to be on your fucking list. Artificial intelligence. I'm not that Ooh. big a fan of it. Really? Be- I don't know. It just this is one of those Spielberg films where I feel like it just didn't gel well. See, for me. I um, almost felt like watching it, but yeah, I, I would have expected that to be on your list too because it's Steven Spielberg. Yeah, I know, but but the, but there were other sci-fi movies that I wanted to rewatch. And yeah, no, I I, I just, get why it's not. I, yeah. I just for I me, wasn't expecting it. It's uh, tonally, it's a little. It's a all it's over, a very divisive Spielberg it's movie. It's it's very mm. all over the place for me tonally. Um, I feel like <clears throat> even though um, uh, God damn it, the kid, um, Six Sense kid, um, oh, Haley Osment, H- yes. Haley Joel yes. Osment, always, oh, he's always good. Um, yeah, yeah. I just think, um, I think. Because this was very much, if you haven't heard, this is this was gonna be a movie where Spielberg and Kubrick uh, were gonna kind of like make it together, um, but Kubrick died before the movie came out, so mm. Spielberg kind of wanted to implement a lot of Kubrick's ideas together with his own, and that's how we got AI. But I just don't think it really flows well for me, and I okay. feel like all the Pinocchio stuff with like the Blue Fairy. Mm. Not just nah. I'm, yeah, I'm that's not just not up your it. alley. Um, it's it's one of those Spielberg films where I think where I think the sappiness kind of um, where the sappiness takes away from the story rather than enhance it. it, and that's the feeling I get from it. It's very sappy. It's a little too huh. sappy for my taste. Well, I I, I think that it, it's I like the hero's journey Be, mm. because and like despite like. Him not having a complete adversary or a physical adversary uh, aside from himself, uh, mm-hmm. aside from that, I I like the hero's journey. I think that the the sappiness plays into it really well, um, because like that's what's driving him. The what's driving him is that uh, need for motherly love, for acceptance, for uh, 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 to just be appreciated for who he is. Um, I think that's one of the reasons uh, why I like his. I feel like Jude Law's character is a little, um, I feel like it's one of the ones that don't get talked about enough for him, mm. but I like his connection to the kid. Like, I, I, I really like that. I, honestly, I feel like there's a lot of, um, I, I feel like it's another thing of it's a little more relevant today, despite being about fucking robots. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like it's still a little relevant because it's, uh, it's about somebody who trying to find their place. It's about these people who are treated as like second class citizens because mm-hmm. of just like what their nature is. It, it's, um, I, I really like a lot of the tropes in it. I, I like a lot of the imagery, like where he's sitting on the bottom of the pool and he's just kind of like that. That's, that kind of feels like the moment where he's let go. 
right. like where he's like, this is just not it. Like I like gr- granted that's like right before they throw him out, but it, it's, it's just kind of the, um, you can't not feel sad for the kid. No, you can't, em- absolutely. you can't not empathize with him. Like, it's just, it's kind of one of those, like everybody wants to feel accepted. Everybody. And like, not only does everybody relate to that message, but the fact that the relevant uh, that it relates to everything now is really cool. I, I I like it. I thought it was done really well. I I like the Pinocchio connection, but I I get why you don't like it. That's just for not me. Actually, your showing the blue, f- like actually showing like a legit blue fairy in it. Well, it, it was it, it was it was the uh, mental image. True. Yeah. Um, so it it was just like what what the little boy android. Right, thought that she'd right. always be like, yeah. No, it was kind of like a last memory, yeah. I, 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 I just, I was surprised that AI was on your list. I, yeah, I, I, that was legit one of the only one ones of, I expected. I don't <laughs> think it's a bad movie at all. Mm. Um, I think it's a perfectly fine movie. Um, I just don't think it's one of Spielberg's best. Okay, no, I get you. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, number five is uh, Meet the Robinsons. Four of the movies on my list are animated. <laughs> I, I should say that right now. <laughs> I I think the movie is perfectly fine until the ending, which I think it makes it better. Um, I think I really like how it ends. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm with you there. Me and the yeah. Robinsons almost made my list, and I almost felt like rewatching it. Yeah, yeah. But well, that it, shows you how there actually are some really good sci-fi movies that came out in that decade. Yeah, yeah. It, this is also one of the ones that people don't really talk about in relation Absolutely. to Disney. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah it's very super under, undervalued. Very underappreciated. It's it, it's great. I love it. Yeah. Our lists are crazy. I've still got five that haven't been mentioned. It's crazy. Really? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, I, I honestly I did expect that for this episode. I I didn't expect us to cross over a yeah. whole lot. No. Yeah. What I next actually... week? Next week I figured if you're would have been here, it would we would have had like seven of the same problem. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> what What I love most about this movie is the family is great. Uh, the uh, about uh, keep going and keep doing, uh, uh, keep doing it, keep and, moving uh, forward, and, and keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. It's a great message. I yeah. think for me, the I still think the animation looks great. I, I love the villain. The villain is great. <laughs> the dinosaur is hilarious when he was like, <laughs> the big head and you're the seeing lords. subtitles at the bottom. It's, it's really great. And <laughs> and, and there's and there's some really good sci-fi this elements. Thought out too well. <laughs> and all about and all it's also about family elements, and I love that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, yeah. You really like the family. In absolutely. This. Yeah. It, again, it ties into that kind of uh, element of like everybody wants to be accepted. Everybody wants to find their place. Like everybody mm-hmm. wants that uh, that kind of love, and it, it, it's super nice. Uh, mm-hmm. I, honestly, I like the. Um, but, uh, since I just all said, uh, said that about AI, I'll focus on something else about it. Uh, I, I like the. Um, I like how they did the future of it, yes. because yeah. it's normally when you see like future, you see these like tall, gleaming cities, but there are still all these. Um, it's not weird enough, in my opinion. Like, we got that fucking advanced, but we stopped making weird shit. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, no. Like, like I, I, I could get that for reality. I get, uh, again, why they made the fucking movies for it. But there aren't enough fucking movies that do that weird shit. And this gave me that. Like, uh, like you can't injure yourself from falling out of a fucking window. Like, you can't do that. How, how uh, like, like uh, the, the greater, that could, that could be, like, a, there's a greater application for stuff like AstroTurf. You know, like today, like in actual life, yeah. there's a greater application for it if it can be developed. And this did it. It developed it. Like you replace you you replace the uh, the greenery in a safe way, and then you don't get fucking injured. You don't have to worry about falling out of a fucking uh, window because something's going to happen. The floor will open up beneath you. Like there are so many solutions that mm-hmm. aren't depicted in the future that are depicted here. Like, it's just, it, it's kind of that fantastical element, and it's, I like when sci-fi adopts it. I like when sci-fi gets weird. I like when we have these creepy yeah. things. Because a lot and, of science, like, futuristic cities and lands, just, a lot of them look the same. Yes, There's it's, very it's a little variation. boring. It's, like, glossy white, if not mirror if it's finish. Not Bla- if it's not Blade Runner, it's, like, Tomorrowland or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the two. You don't ever have anything that's, like, fun. It's either grounded or it's gritty uh, oh no it's kind of fucking weird yeah. yeah 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 if it's not like a depressing dark foggy and rainy 
disgusting neon yeah. city. It's like this bright, you know, beautiful, like Utopian. colorful yeah. utopia, like Tomorrowland or yeah. something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. I actually don't mind Tomorrowland. Eh, it definitely is not on my list. No, it's not no. on either. <laughs> actually, I don't mind it. Just not. For yeah. Me. I'm not going to tell a story, but I'm still actually really fucking pissed off about the Tomorrowland movie for a completely different reasons that don't matter in the movie. <laughs> okay. I'm sure it'll be I was very, at a later date. <laughs> I was very excited to see Tomorrowland because I love Brad Bird. Mm. Um, I ended up being very disappointed. So, it, it, I feel like there, there was a lot of good things behind it. I feel like there was a lot of good cast in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, uh, yeah. But that, that's a different thing to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you got? Uh, me and the Robinsons, really good. Uh, number four, iRobot. Yeah. Hmm. Alex, yeah, Alex <laughs> Proyas. Um, I, th- I think I briefly talked about this when I brought up Dark City because um, I love Dark City was on my 90s list mm. and, you know, I love The Crow. Yeah, this was the beginning of my, where Alex Proyas, I think, was declining a little bit as okay. a director. I don't think this is, this is a bad movie. No. I think it's entertaining enough and I think Will Smith is really good. Yeah. Um, for me personally, I think the story is just not that engaging for me and like it I feel should like be engaging. this is the fucking place where we're going right now. <laughs> like with the advancement of AI, <laughs> like True. they're they're wanting to put those fucking robots in our homes in the next five years. Like I did not murder active, him. There's an active like fucking um, prototype for I, it. It's I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. I love robots, but ugh. I feel well, like it's a thing. <laughs> and I feel like the CG in this movie is very distracting for me personally. Really? I think that holds up really just, well. The I'm with you there. I've been wanting to watch it. I still think visual is great. Even yeah. For like 2004, I feel like this, the CG is just, it's, um, yeah, it's just not my thing. Do you think that it's like Uncanny Valley or? A little bit. Okay. Um, like it doesn't, it could have been done differently in a way that's not as distracting as it is in the film for me. Okay. Um, yeah. I just, yeah. The, now, Alex Breas is, I don't think in terms of CG, because Alex Breas later directed Gods of Egypt, Gods of Egypt, yeah. which has some of the worst CG in history. <laughs> I mean, good God, but it's not as bad as that, but it's 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 up there for me. Okay, okay. No, I, I, have I, any of you guys I, seen Gods of Egypt, by no. the way? I've seen it. I've seen it. it no, I've only oh seen it God. once, but I've seen and it. And I'm not playing <laughs> on it, honestly. The only reason why I feel the need to rewatch is because of Chadwick Boseman. That's the only reason. Why he was in that yeah, movie? Yeah, he's in it. Yeah, uh, I, God I think he plays. Almighty. It was raw? not a good use of his no, talent. It's, it's not raw. Oh boy. I, I forget who he plays, but yeah, he he's in it. Um, the movie's awful. Man. Okay, uh, I, I I like I Robot. I I really do. Um, I I like the. Cause it it kind of it has that kind of like messiah trope in it, mm-hmm. and it kind of leaves it open ended as to how it is. I don't know if a definite answer has come out about it, but to me, it's been it's kind of made out to be um, Will Smith's character is the messiah because he's the blend of both yeah. worlds. He's the one who's going to create that unification. He, uh, yeah. that's what it is, um, and that's something that I really, I. Admittedly, I'm not a religious person, uh, so like normally, I, I feel like I'm one of the people where you wouldn't expect they would like a messiah message in in, in media. There are lots of messiah stories that I love. I yes, mean, look, same. At Dune, look at Dune. Yeah, example. yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, that is one of the biggest tropes in sci-fi. I feel. Yes, and agreed. A lot of that came from that story. So. Uh, I, I I love it. I uh, honestly, it being here, I I kind of wish that like that. <clears throat> uh, I I will say if I were to throw out a con about iRobot, it would be that I wish that the the uh, Messiah theme played into it a little bit more than it did, mm-hmm. because I feel like that was it. It really, really, really took the back seat to the overall mystery of the movie, which is yeah. fine. Like I don't I don't want it to be all about that. I don't want it to be split fifty fifty either. Like, like I just feel like that was more a more important thing. That should have been talked about. I feel like it has a lot of interesting ideas, but it yes. doesn't really explore them in favor of like a more like a straightforward sci-fi action. Film yeah, like they wanted to keep it linear, but they introduced mm-hmm. these different things. Yeah, uh, uh, it's it's those different things that I always like really picking up in a movie, and it's honestly a bummer that uh, uh, to my uh, to my knowledge they're never planning on continuing this kind of thing. 
That's weird. I though. would like to see a follow up to uh, to iRobot. There is, I feel like there is something more interesting you can do with this world. Yeah. Because are there? Because this is based on a book. Is are there more books? I don't know. I've don't never know. looked at the book series. It's I, Isaac I, Asimov. I commonly don't. And another one. I was another movie. I wanted to put on this list. I Am Legend. Um, yes. Which I love. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and they're it, gonna it was, plan, it was one and they're for me. gonna do a sequel to that. Yeah. Um, That's being a sequel. Yeah, and it's a sequel. Uh, <laughs> It follows up to the like deleted ending, Which right? Which is the better the ending, ultimate? the yeah. way better ending. And yeah. I believe Michael I B. Like Jordan's in it. Legend, but yeah, I, I heard that. I didn't the know the theatrical how ending is not good. Um, I, it I kind didn't of know how I feel about the okay. original ending. I never need to watch the. Uh, I I, I, the I need alter- to watch the director. The alternate one. ending okay. that you can see on like the DVD is like it is mu- is closer to what the the original story was going for, and it's yeah. way more powerful and way more like compelling. Yeah, um, yeah. Instead of just like yeah. <laughs> like just a just a standard yeah. sacrifice. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, don't forget the classic movie, Last Man on Earth, which is essentially the same movie. Yeah, in life. yeah. I, that's true. That's the, true. The Omega. There's there's many versions of yeah. that of that many movie adaptations of that story. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, let me take a guess. What's going to be three and two? Am I going to take a guess that Church of Pride is three and Wally is two? No. Oh. Mm. You're wrong. Really? You're, you're close on one of them. Yeah, Treasure Planet is two. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. My number three is Atlantis. Okay. Oh, really? I just, it, it, yeah, I, I love okay. Atlantis. Um, okay. uh, I uh, obviously prefer Treasure Planet over Atlantis. That's just my personal thing. Um, but Atlantis, I it, it's another case of like, I love the animation in this. Yeah, I love, the animation's yeah. great. Yeah, um, I, I I understand the the um the comment about how like the villain's predictable. Like he absolutely fucking was. Yeah, he, he's, but, yeah. he's basically the bad guy in Avatar or any. Of these yeah, other yeah. It's just movies. like colonialism. That's yeah. what it is. Um, I. It's not interesting anymore. <laughs> yeah, no. At, at this point, I feel like it's been done almost every way that it could be. Yeah. And so I feel like it's a lot harder to Unless uh, you do like do something with that. some real additions to that kind of thing. D- stop doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah, it's definitely played out. Um I just this it has a really good cast in my opinion. It does. Oh, Michael uh, J. Fox is great as the main is. character. Yeah. It, it's got uh, uh um shit, Leonard Nimoy in it. Yeah. Yeah, he plays the chieftain. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I, I'm spacing on who plays. Um... Milo. No, because that's, that's Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox. Yeah. Uh, um, I, God, her um, name is. Who Who's the character? It's uh, Kita. Kita. Um, I ca- yeah, I'm looking that up right now. I, I totally forget who plays Kita, but she, um... she did a really great uh, great job in my opinion too. Uh, that is, this is a name I don't know. Ki Cree Summer. I don't know that, that sounds is. familiar. I, I'm gonna have to look up her filmography. I'm not later. familiar with that, but it, she she did really well uh, there too. Uh, I, um, honestly, I feel like the characters were fleshed out really well. Um, I like the. It doesn't have one of my favorite soundtracks. I uh, again prefer Treasure Planet over Atlantis, but I, I still think that the accompanying soundtrack is really good. Yeah, um, I like. I think that a lot of the designs uh, uh, were. Awesome. Oh, the designs are great in this. Yeah, absolutely. But it, it, I will say, in my opinion, the villain actually isn't that guy. The villain is uh, um, one of those like mistaken kind of things. Uh, or, hmm. he, like he is the villain, but the actual danger isn't him. The actual danger is the power of Atlantis itself. That's what it is. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's 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 what the story is. The, like, uh, it's because of that power that they had to shut themselves off. Yeah. It was because of that power that Kita lost her mother. Like, it's like like, like it uh, removes the autonomy from these people at a moment's notice. You know, uh, it, it's that, but it's also like it can lead to that kind of greed that that dude fucking suffered from. That that entire company was suffering from. Uh, uh, in my opinion, that is the greater danger of the entire movie. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, 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 want, I want to make a quick comment real quick on, yeah, on, on Atlantis. Uh, Michael J. Fox, he actually was offered two animated films to, to choose, either Titan A.E. or Atlantis. He actually asked his son uh, what he uh, what he wanted his dad to do, and he said it would be cool for him to do a Disney movie, so he chose Atlantis. So his son, Good. as he yeah. chose his dad, 
Michael J. Fox do the Atlantis movie, which he, I think that was a wise choice. He fit yeah, perfectly agreed. in that yeah, character. Yeah, yeah, one thousand percent. Honestly, it'd be weird to think about him as the main character in Titan AE because that's he, absolutely yeah, what that was. would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. To go into Treasure, Pl- I had I forgot. That the main gem in Treasure Planet, that was Joseph yeah. Gordon Levitt. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Wow. He's great. Yeah. It, it, it's totally, watching it back, you can tell that it's him, but he's so, uh, he, he's so young in it. it yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Really hard uh, otherwise. Because um, I, I think the, the earliest movie I saw of him was Brick, the Ryan Johnson. Movie. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, wow, I, I think that this was the earliest that I've seen. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but no, uh, I actually haven't. For loving Ryan Johnson, I haven't watched Brick. Brick is awesome. I watched it in college. Yeah, I've heard good things <laughs> about it. I just either. haven't checked it out. It's great. It's great. I've been wanting to check it's it out. Great. Too. It's a great whodunit that's set in like a high school setting. Oh, okay. So it's really interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna have to watch it then. I I I need to add that to my watch list. Send me a text about that. That way I don't forget. You can watch um, it somewhere. Um, I can't remember where, but all right, well, I I guess moving on to my number two. <laughs> yeah, Treasure Planet. <laughs> yeah, which uh, we already talked there's about. There's a lot yeah. of love for Treasure Planet. Here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah, as I just read. it's so fucking good. I I really do love it. it. It's it's amazing. It's visually stunning. Still, uh, it's visually stunning. I I think that's written super well. The characterizations are amazing. We are we we've talked about like everything that makes it super good. Um. The soundtrack is killer. I still think that Jim's theme is one of the best fucking uh, orchestrated pieces that I, or, or not orchestrated pieces, it is just in general one of the best like character songs that I've ever heard in my life. And also the sky surfing. Yes, it's, fucking, it's so it's fucking cool. It is great. You can't, you can't tell me that you wouldn't want to fucking do that. If, if <laughs> the li- that is, if they do a live action version of this movie. Um, that would look amazing if they do it right. It can look yeah. if they do yeah. it wrong, it'll look terrible. But the, yes. if they do it right, absolutely, it'll look awesome. Well, I mean, I just love the the if aesthetic. You got, here's someone I, who speaking of direct. If we were talking about directors who could do Treasure Planet, mm. the guy who did Top Gun Maverick. Imagine what he yes. did with Top Gun uh, Joseph Kaczynski. Yeah, if he did what he did with Top Gun Maverick on something like that, oh, that would be so cool. Yeah, it'd be. Absolutely kick ass, dude. <laughs> yeah, Joseph uh, Kinzinski for a Treasure Planet uh, remake. Yeah, that's our official campaign. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. It doesn't. Even, yeah, I don't. It, it doesn't have to be Spielberg. There's a few people who I think. Yeah, no. Great. Yeah, I'll, I think that a lot of people would fit the bill really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I, I I'll say the 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 thing about uh, solar surf, uh, sol, uh, solar surfing that I really appreciate, just just in general as a thing across uh, sci-fi, is the um. The aesthetic of like solar sails, mm. like I I, I, so I know that this doesn't have a whole lot to do with actual movies, despite like commonly being seen in movies. Right. But like I love solar shielding when they have that hexagonal print. It, it's just one of those like sci-fi um, designs that you never really think about, you know? Mm-hmm. Like like you you can uh, it you uh, you think sci-fi design and people go for like hover cars. They go for that. They go for um, just just a lot of mobility. They go for uh, uh, tech, like uh, um, basically the equivalent of like the 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 uh, iPhone fifty shit like that. Like they go for <laughs> yeah. like completely hands free, screen free calling technology. Body mods. Yeah, they go for that kind of shit. You don't see anybody really talk about solar sails. You don't see them talk about that because that's such a major thing, and th- it's one of those things that. I'm pretty sure we have. <laughs> we still don't talk about it. It's just so aesthetically pleasing to me. It, I, I love the look of it. Uh, so, like the 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 digital solar sail in this was oh. <laughs> no. I it's just beautiful, beautifully animated. I'm hard pressed to find things to not like in this movie. Honestly, I don't really think I can. Also, Martin Short is Ben. Fucking amazing. Yes, absolutely. That <laughs> what, is great. There's a, one of my favorite so characters she's ever played. Names. Emma Thompson is yeah. uh, Captain Amelia. Who voices uh, John Silver? Ryan I, Murray. I can't remember. I'm not familiar yeah. with him. I, he's he's played some pretty big uh, roles. I, I can't remember what, but I, re- I remember looking him up recently. Hmm. Uh, same for the guy who plays Doppler. The guy who plays Doppler is super well known, too. Okay. No, I, I, I can't remember his the actor's name either, but... Uh, yeah, it, it, I love it. Honestly, the characters in this are one uh, are the my favorite kind of motley crew for any uh, adventure film. Yeah, I, I just love the tropes. Um, number one, obviously, Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, <laughs> uh, 
and in parentheses, I should note that on my list, Attack of the Clones. <laughs> I can't not mention both of them. I, I, I fucking love it. I I, I, I am know. a Attack of the Clones truther. Star whore. To my f- yes, <laughs> 1,000%. Yep. Yeah, I'm a star whore. Uh, I actually, I, uh, I brought that up in therapy to my therapist the other day. She gave me the weirdest fucking look. <laughs> I was like, well, moving on. <laughs> um, no, uh, Revenge of the Sith is just amazing. It, in my opinion, it is the best of the prequels. I feel like it's the best done of the prequels. Um, uh, one of the best, um, may, maybe not one of the best, uh, visually, because honestly, I feel like, um, I like the visuals in Phantom Menace more. Um, really? uh, well, aside from the final fight, uh, aside from the final fight, because for me, the final fight and uh, the duel Mustafar in Revenge of the Sith clears every other fight in the and franchise. the opening like battle and yes, uh, yeah, yeah, it, that's widely praised. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I just, I, I feel like this clears like everything. I, I, I just, I like the, uh, um, the planet design more Phantom Menace. Uh, I feel like in, um, in Revenge of the Sith, all that we really see is Utapal. We see uh, uh, Coruscant, you like and we see looks. Musafar. Huh? You like Naboo in the first one? Well, yeah, we still see uh, Naboo here, right? But, but they uh, explore it more. And, yes, and it's a lot more colorful. It's a lot more visually uh, visually pleasing. visually. What ruins Phantom Mess for me, for the most part, is Jar Jar. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it's one of those like he was pine- pioneering in, in CG. That's the reason why I don't. Consider that as a con. I just wish it wasn't that character. I just wish it wasn't Jar Jar. Fuck, I love Jar Jar. I'm a Jar Jar -Jar apologist. (laughs) For some reason, I don't hate him as much. He's goofy. I I feel like that was one of the reasons why people did not fucking like him when when the movie came out. A lot of people hated Jar Jar because of the comedy. It's not the goddamn actor's fault. It's the goddamn people who are behind him. Yeah, but people are fucking stupid. They're going to blame the immediate fucking person. Here's what's funny. It was either College Kids React or adults, or, or adults React. It was on the Fine Bros channel. Jar Jar Binks was on that video, and only one person out of 10 or 11 people that was playing this game was trying to get Matt Challenge, he, she was the only person that got mad at Jar Jar. The rest was fine with it. And I found that so hilarious they probably that only one person yeah. hated it, and yeah. the other 10 or 11 were like, I kind of like Jar Jar. He's cute. And I was like, yeah, he kind of is. So. Well, like, I, I, I can get people Sweet saying that he's own, annoying and shit. Like, I just... <laughs> it, it, in my opinion, Star Wars... Star Wars has always had comedy. It's just, I feel Not like that was a little too much. Jar Jar no, I know. But it's it's a little too much of Phantom Menace. Thankfully, they dialed it back to the next two movies, but he wasn't... It, um, I I consider that more just character progression, not so much like you, you, you know what Jar Jar hey, deserves the best thing about Jar Jar, 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 Jar Binks deserve a Saturday Marty cartoon. The best thing I want to see Re- that I've already watched it. The best <laughs> thing about Revenge of the Sith is that they give Jar Jar no lines. <laughs> they do. They I do. Mean, <laughs> well, very little lines. Yeah. yeah so. No. His 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 importance is definitely diminished in it. Yeah. Thank God. Um, yeah. Uh, th- uh, I I will say uh, uh, a con for Revenge of the Sith for me is how they wrote uh, Padme in it. A lot of people complained about Anakin, Padme, and that's the reason why she heart. got to where she was. As, well, it's it's, it's as it's, good uh, as good as Natalie Portman as a, as an actress. She, those movies did not do her any favors. They didn't. Uh, they didn't. Uh, she was best in the first one. Uh, the second one, she was overly sexualized, yeah. and in this one, she was just reduced to a housewife. Yeah, that's, that's all, all that's she all fucking she was. Has. She's like Iris from the Flash TV show. Yeah. I uh, she was com- uh, she was completely downgraded like every single fucking time, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it I I I was not a fan of it. Yeah, uh, right. uh, I I I really wish that if I really wish that we would get the Lucas cut of it because it was I want like four hours. I don't care about the four hour uh, runtime, but I just want her story to be incorporated more mm. because uh, Genevieve uh, Genevieve O'Reilly was in it. And she will, uh, and she was in one of those. Uh, she plays Mom Mothma. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, she she was in Revenge of the Sith. Uh. She was in the prequels, but she she was also in those scenes. Like she was like the beginning of the 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 rebellion was in those fucking scenes, and they just completely scrapped them. It gave Padme more shit to do too. Like 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 they cut out a lot of her shit. It's one of my only fucking cons for the fucking movie that I want to vocalize. We'll either get a um, if we do get it, we'll either be next year for the twentieth or I, I would for hope. the twenty fifth and twenty thirty. I'll, I'll say I, I, I'll say this last thing. George Lucas is a 
brilliant man and what he's done for storytelling mm. cannot be undersold um i just don't think he works well with actors is i think my big thing um even the best actors in the world in some of these movies i feel like um you know even ewan mcgregor has a few really awkward line deliveries in this one like I've seen the footage killing. Even he was even he was laughing at that. Yeah. Uh, okay. I also don't think that's a good line at all. So the but... Darth Vader no bothered me, but the younglings part bothered you. So we got a little. No, bit it of bothers me too. There. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I. Uh, he covered it up the best they could. I. He's trying I, I not think to it, laugh. It's one of those it's like. It's just, oh, that's it's where Vio Morrison stubbed his toe, kind of too. thing. Like that's um, the Star Wars equivalent. Yeah. Bless his heart. Bless, yeah. Bless, bless, he even there. even in the in uh, a new hope, uh, look at, like there's still a lot of like weird act like line deliveries in that. And I, George Lucas is great at many things. I think working with actors is not his strong suit, and I think the prequels prove that for a lot of us. His, in my opinion, it's his characterizations that fall flat, especially his characterizations of female. That characters. too. But like a lot of the act, like acting performances in a lot, most of the prequels are just not there. I d- disagree um, because Hayden Christensen <laughs> fucking kills it for what the role is. Yeah, it requires somebody who has been, uh, who was fully in touch with his emotions, and then told to completely fucking cut him off. Yeah, couldn't show him. Was constantly told to push him down. Uh, he went to the fucking council for shit, and they were like, "Yeah, I know that you're saying that you're feeling these things, but you fucking can't." Like. It's it's totally expected of a character like that. I think that Hayden Christensen kills it, uh, kills it in his performance. It, it ties back into my defense of Attack of the Clones, which I've mentioned it before. But uh, uh, the people commonly criticize the "I hate sand line." How the fuck else is he supposed to fucking flirt? How he's been told his enti- uh, for the past ten fucking years, you can't get no bitches. <laughs> well, like, yeah. like he's he's been fucking told, hey, don't fucking flirt with people. Hey, don't catch feelings. Hey, don't fucking do this. Hey, don't think that. Like, how the fuck is he supposed to fucking say this shit? He's trying to flirt. That's the reason why it's so fucking bad. <laughs> he, 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 There's a way to write that in a way. He's, it's, in a it, that's what he's doing as a fucking 12 year old boy. I'm, that's where I'm he's say, at. I'm at that saying point. this as, a, as an aspiring screenwriter. There's a way to do that in other ways. I'm and just, you're wrong I'm here. Just te- I'm just telling you. <laughs> uh, I'm, you're wrong here. I Because that no, was I'm perfectly not. fucking. I'm yes, you are. <laughs> You That's are. Your, it's your opinion still. So. Yeah, no, I, I know. Okay. But you're fucking wrong here. We gotta, we gotta get this quick, and it's been over two hours, and we haven't even got the Matthew yet. Yeah, <laughs> Reset, Revenge of the Sith. No, no, like, like go, go ahead. Like, I'll, I'll fucking wrap it up there. Yeah, I thought but I don't fully you have defend like the a... fucking dialogue. It's it fully fits everything in the fucking stories that was set up, and the way that the characters portray themselves and deliver their lines makes sense. In my opinion, the person uh, to gripe about is Ewan McGregor, and we've already mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Like Ewan McGregor is the one who didn't sell a, certain, a few lines across the, uh, the trilogy that he was in, and he gets out, out he gets out of the prequels the best. Yes, he did. And uh, yeah, Ian McDermott though is the clear standout in the prequels. oh one thousand fucking percent. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. apologize. It's been over two hours long. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Matthew. We had to bring up Star Wars. Yeah, no. I, of course, I was going to go off about it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's still five movies on my list that we're never talking about. God damn. <laughs> uh, this one, it's a sci-fi movie. It's definitely not the best movie, but it's really enjoyable. It gives a pulpy, almost steampunk aesthetic in a way. Mm-hmm. Retro-futuristic. Uh, Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah. That's a very interesting one. Um, it's a good pick, it, in my opinion. It's, yeah, very pulpy. Um, a lot of this... <laughs> Very interesting use of CG. Very kind of yeah. Um, it's didn't very it come unique out, didn't, visuals. Didn't it come out at the same time at like Sin City? Uh, Two thousand four. Yeah, close. Sin to. City was six. So um, yeah. yeah, I feel like very similar, like style wise, like a lot of green screen, cereal. green screen work, and yeah, it's supposed to look. It's not supposed to look realistic in any way. Right. Um, I think it's a. I think it's all right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not. For me, not a classic. Yeah, but... it's it's not a great movie. It's it's very visually pleasing, though. Agreed. Yeah. Um, and and I do enjoy the pulpy aspect of it. Uh, I have Children of Men at number nine. Uh, mm-hmm. I need to rewatch okay. it. I've only I'm seen surprised it... it's that low. Yeah, <laughs> I've only seen it twice, so I need to rewatch it. Um, great movie though. 
Number eight is Sunshine. Oh, I, I, I wasn't sure if you'd seen this, but... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have the DVD of it. I recently found it, because I had not seen a copy anywhere of it physically. I found it at Best Buy on Blu-ray. Yeah, I found it at Goodwill at, um, one day. Mm. So it's like, yeah, I'm buying this. Yeah, $3. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, I, <laughs> nice. I really enjoy Sunshine. Yeah, I'd never seen a copy out in the wild, so it's like, this is going to be mine. Uh, number seven... A sci-fi horror movie, uh, which started a series, uh, probably Vin Diesel's second best. Oh series. God! Oh Pitch yeah, Black. yeah. Yes, Pitch Black. Man, Pitch I Black. wanted to. Put, oh, okay. I yeah. wanted to put this on here, but yeah, I was going to throw mine too. There's just not enough room. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Riddick. Riddick is just one of the great sci-fi characters of that time. Uh, yeah. I feel like his acting is better in this than the Fast and Furious movie. Okay. Yeah, one hundred fucking Riddick percent. Is, Riddick is a very interesting character. Yeah. Now, what do you think of like the other like Chronicles of Riddick and just Riddick? I've only seen Riddick once. Uh, Chronicles is definitely weaker. Yeah, it is. Um, hmm. um, yeah, Pitch Black is just very simple, but it's but it's really entertaining. Yeah. Um, re- like they do a lot with the. I think the budget was very fairly small. It was, yeah. Um, but they do a lot with it. And they used, um, this was one of the trivia questions before, they used unused ideas from Alien 3 and ah, as part of the plot point. Interesting. Hmm. Huh. No wonder I like like it more. Yeah. <laughs> um, number six is a disaster sci-fi thriller. Mm. Um, it It's... I didn't expect it to be on anybody's list, but it scared the crap out of me when I first watched it. It's an end-of-the-world movie. Uh, knowing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I I, I have very knowing. mixed feelings on this movie. It, it's good in my opinion. I like I, it. I think Nick Cage gives a very good performance. It's one of yes. the best. Um, yeah, one thousand percent. Um, it does. I like, I like the you know the discovering everything. Like I find that very fascinating yes. about how they explore that, like the math, the mathematics, and. Yeah. Numerology. Um, yeah, uh, you and I uh, it, watched it. It definitely. Uh, yeah. um, Alex Price directed that too. Yes, uh, mm. there's I, been a lot of Alex Price <laughs> movies mentioned. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's not a bad movie. There's just a lot of it that for me just doesn't really like. I feel like is very unnecessary. Like the those care like those bald guys. I forget what they're called. Yeah. Uh, for me, I just don't. I think that went a little too far. They went a little too far with that. Um, and, uh, they were trying to give like an end times thing into a sci-fi twist. They they were essentially angels, but yeah, yeah. for me it, just, it it was very silly. Yeah. Um, but no, I think it's 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 a it's not a bad movie. I think there's just some of it that can be done um, differently and better. Yeah. The, um, the numbers they also, creep me out. I, and I was like, <laughs> whoa, what? Yeah, um, it creeped me then, out because I seen it for the first time like honestly, six months before it happened. This is a better like what 2012 was trying to do. I think Knowing did it better. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, like, it did because there was all that. I remember all that fear going on with uh, the the Mayan calendar. Yeah, um, 2012 I feel didn't like, scare me. Knowing did. Yeah, because yeah. I watched Knowing like six months before that happened. And 2012 just did it purely was just the dumb schlocky disaster movie <laughs> yeah. um no ben mendelson was in this yes i yeah. just yeah it was like wow and rose burn and rose burn um man ben mendelson's come a long way yeah he? um the disaster sequences were amazing in this and film, I, I i really um i like the i really like the ending um not the like when the kids are taken not that part um i the, appreciate the, the end fact of the world part that under un, the end of the world does happen, and they just accept it. Yeah, um, I really like that, and, and I like the sequence the, is great. I like the montage too. With I can't remember what song they use, but when he's driving back to see his family, and yeah, before it happens, really powerful. Uh, th- I feel like that's how it would happen. Like yeah, people are just going to resort to every kind of desire they have, violence, whatever, mm-hmm. and they're just going to go absolutely crazy if it yeah. does happen. Mm-hmm. I I might have to rewatch it. I don't remember liking it that much when I first saw it yeah. but yeah. it's a really well made movie I surprised you yeah. loved it yeah um number 5 where am I uh Cloverfield there you go uh one of my favorite found it probably is my favorite found footage movie either that or chronicle um, yeah yeah chronicles really chronicle's great too so good uh yeah. but yeah i i love what a Cl- what a fall from grace that director though. yeah <laughs> right after that <laughs> Josh Trank but that's Cloverfield and then 10 Cloverfield Lane are 
both fantastic movies. Yeah. Different di- movies, but yeah, very, di- very different ways. And um, yeah, Matt, both Matt Reeves and um, J.J. Abrams, n- n- um, who directed uh, uh, Ten Dan Trachtenberg. Who yeah. Directed, oh yeah. Who, who did Prey? Though. Yeah. He's yeah. He's going up there too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this one I'm surprised not on your list because it's kind of like an indie sci-fi. Uh, Moon with Sam Rockwell. It was oh. very close, I, 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 but I want to rewatch it. Okay. I wasn't really in the right That's mindset. That's the movie I wanted to comment on, yeah. I wasn't real when I first watched it, I wasn't really in the right mindset. Maybe it was just because it was like, I watched it like when it was like late at night and I was kind of yeah. tired. It is a slow I, I movie. Do, I do want to wa- watch it again. It's a really good movie. It, it has pretty much everything I love. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely want to rewatch. Yeah, that. that's the movie I actually did wanted to comment on. Sam Rockwell's um, tr- yeah, amazing. I, in yes. it. And yeah, I just watched it recently. Um, the cinematography is great. Sam Rockwell, uh, Sam Rockwell is fantastic. I mean, this is one of Sam Rockwell's best performances. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the visual effects it, it is amazing. No, mm-hmm. so. But for some reason, it was a missed mark for me. I'll tell you why. Uh, the story, I had so much trouble keeping up with the story like i had mm. so many questions like why was there clones of Sam i feel Ro- like uh, why was there clones of Sam i feel like Rockwell? that's part of the point of the how movie, this though. daughter <laughs> got from what like three four three four years old to 15 years old when it's only a three-year project i was so confused uh apparently there's a follow-up film called mute what yeah did duncan jones direct that yeah uh, uh, oh a... did that have scars guard in it alexander scars uh, yes oh I watched that. That movie, I hated it. I watched okay. it when it came out. I hated it. Yeah, um, and, and, was and, not nearly on the level as yeah. Moon. Yeah, believe me, Matthew. I tried to love this movie. I really tried, but and, I only gave it three stars. Out and of five. one, like, one I thing. Really tried. I know we're not supposed to compliment this man. Kevin Spacey's voice as the robot is, yes. is very good. Oh, interesting. Um, and it also has uh, Kayla Solidaro. Oh yeah! Wow. Uh, she was in the movie Crawl. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I like her. And Wong is in it. Benedict Wait, really? Wong? Yeah. Yeah. He's he, yeah. yeah, he's in both Sunshine and Moon. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's in Sunshine. Uh and this was a low budget movie. It was only made for five million. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Dun- what did you think because Duncan Jones directed this. What yeah. did you think of Warcraft? I did not watch it. Oh, you didn't watch Warcraft? I enjoyed no. it. Duncan Jones, I feel like, had had like the um in the same similar way to like Shyamalan, like came out the gate with a really good movie moon and was on like could have been one of the great directors and then he kind of like fell off yeah after that yeah but what did you think at the thought when i said that i found the story to be a little confused and i try to keep i it mean up? i can't uh fault you but like i feel like the mystery element um you know is what i'm is what yeah. makes i must have missed yeah. something i yeah. don't know mm. um this is the last movie on my list that hasn't been mentioned i believe but um I'm really surprised John didn't have this on his list. Uh oh. It's a it? remake of a fifties movie. Oh. What is it? Uh going through the Messiah tropes. The day the earth stood still. Oh, yeah, I did yeah. not like this one. Whoa. Um, did wow. not like this one I am at all. Very surprised. Because a lot of people did not like that movie. That, I enjoyed. I it. hate. I really did not like this movie. I enjoy it too. Um, I'm right. not surprised that, that really it sucks because I'm this is directed by Scott Derrickson, <laughs> yeah, who it directed is. Sinister and all that. And like, Doctor Strange. Yeah. And it, Scott Derrickson himself, I've from what I know, is like I. I had a really bad experience making this <laughs> yeah. movie. I, I really enjoy I, it. I did not. Keanu is not bad as Klaatu. No. Um, it's just I. I don't know. Just. I could not get into this in pales in comparison to the 50s one, which is a classic. I've not seen the 50s one, so um, maybe that's what it's all part it's, of it. It's great. Ah, um, it, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Watch it. It's one of the all-time great classic science fiction yeah. films. Yeah, just um, the I, stuff with, like, the ro- uh, gore is yeah. what they call the robot. Yeah. Completely almost didn't even need to be in this movie. It was barely even a presence when in the, in the original he's, like, Almost like the antagonist, even though like he's a soulless like machine who's gonna destroy humanity. I feel like the I feel like the essence of the original was not in this remake, okay. and it, what made it so iconic and classic. I don't know. This movie just lacked so much, and I feel like it, that was like there from like conception. I just feel like they just had a they just had. 
to feel like they had to remake it because it, this was in the time that like all these remakes were coming out. It could like, be worse. It could be Tom Cruise War of the Worlds. <laughs> I like World, I like World you know of what? Worlds. I, I, I like I, that. I, 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 like, I like that much much more than this one. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, like I, I, I like the effects when they're in the like, basement. I, yeah, I get the, <laughs> the ending. The ending is kind of dumb in the War of the Worlds, but I I like I like this the suspense of the uh, the Spielberg War of the Worlds. I think was uh, was what really made it. I I need to rewatch it. Re- you like that better than the War of the Worlds? Yeah. <laughs> like. I know I mean, War, the War of the Worlds has a lot of like so... it is, it is. War of the Worlds has a lot of like divisive thoughts on it, but yeah. like it's not a I don't think it, it's a bad movie at all. I, it's I not horrible. Both. No. Um, like, it's not I watched bad, the, it's I watched just... it again like a, last year. I I yeah. liked it. So. I've not seen it. I haven't seen War of the Worlds in like eight or nine years. Yeah, yeah I'm just yeah. Just to let you know, the day the Earth stood still, that was not even close to being. The, I, I haven't heard. <laughs> it wasn't the, even close. The, the, what really caught? I haven't heard anyone mention this goddamn movie in like since it came out. The day the Earth stood like, still. Yeah, like it feel. I feel like people like completely forgot this movie. Like, and that's how no li- it, it, that's how mentioned. little it, it feels like. It's had mentioned. so little like staying power because I I watched it when it like. When it first hit video, when I was a kid, I didn't. I didn't even like it when I was a kid. Yeah, I've got it the DVD of it. Had no, had no impact on me whatsoever compared to the original. Well, well this will redeem me for you. Uh, next one is Minority Report. Okay. My number two. Good. Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, one of my favorite sci-fi movies of all time, top hundred movie of all time. I don't know where I had it ranked, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's in my top hundred. Uh, I prefer hard sci-fi. Like this is a masterclass, and and it's still very fun. It has a lot of yeah. Th- even though it fa- even it has a lot of Spielberg elements that yeah. people love, but it mixes in very well. Like the the man on the run thing has a lot of Indiana Jones type of yeah. fun adventure to it. Um, even though it's more based in science, it's still a lot of fun. Yeah, it's still very much a movie that like for casual people. So yeah. And I'll say number one, and then we'll go straight to uh, the next conversation that we're going to have real quick. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about it. Okay. Revenge of the Sith. We'll just move on from there. Knew it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, a lot of people, we're going to have a little conversation about this. A lot of people are complaining about the new 28 Years Later. Oh, my God. Because it, uh, it was shot on an iPhone, and people are having a cow about that. I I did research. Do people... Yeah, no, I saw the picture of what it is. Yeah, I. Oh yeah, I saw. I did see that picture too. Yeah. Uh, if slightly you, modified. Quote, quote. If you want to, I did, I actually did research myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mentioned it was shot on a VHS camera. Well, something like that. Yeah. I, I'm not sure what the actual yeah. camera was. But uh, I think it was like shot literally. It was literally shot on like 1920 by 1080, like something like no other movie does. Like usually they shoot like. 4K or up. But, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you go on IMDb, you can do the research yourself, look at the technical aspects, type in that camera into eBay, you can find that camera for $80 to $200 now. <laughs> the one from yeah, like, the original? Wow, yeah. good. No. Yeah. So the, even the original was not shot on a high-end camera. Mm. What, and uh, 28, uh, 28 weeks later was looked more like a... Like a standard movie, and I I like yeah. that movie too. Yeah, um, it's good. Yeah, I I'm I'm not sure where the problem is here. No, I don't like, either. I don't like, get yeah. I don't get the hubbub. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That picture is insane. Like <laughs> you see that iPhone and the just like monstrosity of a <laughs> lens on it. It's like I don't know. I feel can like you, I, can you just wait and see how the movie looks first? Like, <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. Since when is shoot like? I don't like. Do people not realize how many major movies have been shot on iPhones? Zack Snyder. People worship Zack Snyder. He shot a short film completely on an iPhone. And not just that. Like Steven Soderbergh has shot multiple movies now on iPhones. Yeah. If, if you watch them, you some of them you won't even be able to tell. And now people have a problem um, with it. Like, what the prince, that's, guys? That's kind of a Danny Boyle thing. Is like he doesn't shoot uh, most of his movies like other directors would. He, yeah. Um, you know, with 20, 20 days later, and um, what planet are you from? <laughs> uh, even Train Spotting has some kind of like that um, raw feel to it, and um, 
uh, 127 hours, 127 hours. Um, I'm not sure what that was shot on, but it also has that very raw look to it that yeah. doesn't look like Hollywood. But I mean, and there's even films that purposely go for a lower look. Not that this would have a lower look, but uh, mm-hmm. I I don't remember who directs it, but uh, I would, Inland Empire. Yeah, abs- yeah, that that movie was sh- <laughs> like shot on consumer level, and I feel like and it's it considered added... one of the greatest horror movies of all time from the 2000s. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, it's just all the freaking out about this. Uh, why? It, yeah, money it, it, does it, it, not equal a good film. Yeah, and I would much rather them actually put money towards like production, like design, like obviously the actors too, makeup, you know, the effects. This yeah. obviously is not going to be a very CG heavy movie, right? Um, you know, actually put money into other there are other important things to put money into besides what the camera is i feel like right. any of the best directors of all time would tell you the camera the, the, that they're using isn't what matters most it's what you see it, it's what you see you know behind the cam it's what you see from behind whatever it is yep. and, and even it's, even, the, it's the vision that's driving the film, not the camera. Even with mm. the camera, it's not the camera, it's how you use it. Yeah, ex- exactly. It, what The most important piece of filmmaking is the director. It's you who's behind the camera, yeah. man. Yep, like, absolutely. Um, I, I can say that from experience, you know. <laughs> yep. Um, it's like... Ugh. And I got this, and I got the experience the behind the scenes of one of Paul's short films, and it was very mm-hmm. fun. It was very fun to do so. Do you have any thoughts on this, Dylan? No, I mean, I, I fully agree with everything that uh, that Garrett's saying. There's a lot more to making a movie than what a camera is. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I definitely think that there have been cases in the past where, like, a camera could help, like, make or break how a movie feels. Absolutely. Uh, uh, um, yes. But it's, like, on a big budget movie, like, absolutely. Like, you yes. want to use, yeah, you want to use... You don't want to use an iPhone to like make like an Avengers movie, right? That's yeah, no, not yeah. What you want, um, but like with something like this, where you can do where it's not like something like this big IP, like this big franchise. It's with something like, like this, indie... you can do almost anything you want with it. Yeah, and, it still is very much like an indie type franchise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. I I forget what the budget is, but it has a decent budget. Can, yeah, um, but yeah, it's like. It's not really that important, especially when you consider the roots of the franchise, uh, the roots of the first movie, which, um, yeah, like I said, it was shot on a very low level camera. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, which and that's I, what I think made it so. Yeah. That's what made it so effective. It mm-hmm. looked unlike any other movie at the time. Yeah. Uh, and, and let me get to one more thing before we wrap it up. For, it, all, for all you people that complain about movies being shot on iPhones. Watch any movie that's done by the Asylum, and then you can go start complaining. Because <laughs> the Asylum had some dreadful movies. Yeah. Uh, it's not saying the budget for uh, 28 years later yet. Yeah, I was going to say, not. I think it's a little too early for that. But the cast includes Aaron Taylor Johnson, and Jody Killian, Kilmer. And Killian's back. And yeah. Killian Murphy, which I'm uh, so Ralph, excited to see. Ralph Fiennes. Mm-hmm. Jack O'Connell. Aaron Kellyman, who uh, was in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was also in Solo. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that this is gonna. This has every. This has every reason to be great. Yeah, because um, I love. I almost. I almost put the the original Twenty Eight Days Later in this sci fi list. But ah. it didn't quite make it. There you go. Um, the budget for the first one was eight million. Yeah. Ah. And mm. I think th- what made that original movie so great was that how empty everything felt yeah especially yeah. when killing murphy is walking out in london and there's like it's so weird not seeing anyone around him the fact that they managed to clear out so much of that city and it just only the lone person walking through that, it's eerie yeah there's just something so eerie about that i it's definitely like, need to rewatch it's those. like um it's very much like uh with how i am legend works it was like Seeing just one lone person walking through New York City, yeah, right. There's just something off-putting about that. Yeah. I just that works so well. I um, definitely need to rewatch the 28 movies. Same, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. I've got both Blu-rays. Um, okay. 
So, there's an upcoming sci-fi movie that's coming out this week, The Wild Robot, which I cannot wait yeah, to review excited. and to watch, which I believe that's what we're going to be talking about for next week. So uh, You can review it, yeah, if you're going to watch it, yeah. Oh, I'm pretty sure Garrett's going to go see it as well. So. Um, Probably not this weekend because I'm going to be so busy. Okay. Um, but well, okay, I'll watch it. Okay. Yeah, if you guys want to review it, go for it. Life oh, is uh, life yeah. is chaotic that's, for that's me right now. That's now in my high, my most anticipated animated films of the year. Like the previews look amazing. Yeah, so, it looks so, really good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, which perfect compliment for sci-fi September for sure. So yeah, that's coming very very soon. Yeah. Um, next, We're finishing it off with the top sci-fi movies of the 2010s and 20s next week. Yes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and. Please be respectful in the comments, please. And uh, roast Ma- Matthew for not seeing Wally. <laughs> Go ahead and roast him. Um, uh, we got some more other craziness coming to you very, very soon. Uh, remember to like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, threads. which has over and threads, threads, which has got over 90 followers on Instagram, which, guys, thank you for that. Um, more big projects coming very soon. Um, uh, help Liking us and stuff and following us will really help us a lot. Yes. Because... We need more subscribers. Uh, I'll just say this: like, we do need more subscribers to be able to go to conventions to talk to celebrities. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. It's a requirement. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. if you guys could help us grow with that, that'd be amazing. Yeah. yeah. So just make sure to share with your friends, yes. uh, uh, like-minded individuals. Like, just uh, uh, make sure to do that. It, it re- genuinely, it does fucking help us out. Yes. A little bit goes a long way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we're about to start a recording of a review rewind a light year, so that's either going to be uploaded or it's going to be, uh, It'll be uploaded coming later soon. In the week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming soon, <laughs> which I cannot wait to talk about. So that's yep. going to be coming, and that's all I have, have to say. Thank yeah. you and good night. God Thank bless you. everybody. Good night. Cinema Asylum Podcast! You guys were awesome! Thanks for coming out! Good night!